Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for co-op news, reviews, and playthroughs. I'm Peter, and tonight we're playing through Marvel Champions. What's up, Terrence? How's, How's it going? going? Uh, made it back home, survived the con. Feels... Yes. Another one in the books. Con of Heroes, for those of you who don't know, and that's going to be a little bit of the theme of what we are doing today. We are um, recapping Con of Heroes at the end, so if you're here for that, stay tuned till the very end. Uh, and then right now we are going to play one of the scenarios. So there was a three scenario campaign while we were at Con of Heroes, and we are going to play the first scenario of that three scenario campaign, which uh, it's going to have a new standard encounter set. We are playing uh, Expert, by the way, uh, and we are playing. Oh, you didn't. We got to pull out that modular thing. Yeah, um, I know you didn't have it, so I just grabbed it. Yep. Yep. All right. So scenario one. Well, if you want to do it on Tabletop Simulator, it was right here in the Marvel Champions Miscellaneous. Um, so it's available there. If you want to play with your real-life cards, which we often suggest you do, uh, go ahead and go to um, conofheroes.com, and it is available for print and play over there. But you are going to see us playing the first one on Expert. So the first one is campaign setup. Each player controls a, a standard dex. This is called the Wild West Bandit Scenario 1. We're using crossbones and some alternative uh, com, uh, components, including the Wild Mojo, uh, which we start in play optionally. We are doing it. Um, flip this card and get ready. All right, so the, uh, what we're using in it, we're using crossbones, of course, experimental weapons. Those are normal, but we're also using Western uh, from the Mojo Pack. Ransacked Armory, we believe that's from Hood, right? Yeah, it's definitely from Hood. Uh, Mary says that I'm echoing. I know why you're echoing. Your... I just realized something. Give me one second. You're echoing because for some reason it didn't, it never switches to my headphones anymore. So I apologize. I will fix that post haste. All right, say something. Hello, how's right. it going? All right, yeah, yeah, you're in my ears now. You're in my ears, in my ears. So, uh, Ransacked Armory, again, from the hood. Uh, Hits for Hire is from this uh, Con of Heroes pack. And then we have Standard Rivalry Encounter Sets, which is going to bring out our, uh, like, um, stuff more regularly. But there is no... Shadows of the Past, so I'm sorry. We can all drink now um, to the death of you, Shadows of the Past. <laughs> you could just drink for every card instead, though that might not be a good idea. There are a lot of them. Uh, so we're only six. Only six. Yeah, so we're drinking to the death of Shadows of the Past. I think that's a good way to start the, uh, the evening. All right, where else are we doing? Uh, all right, so then we set it, uh, then we flip this over. Uh, action, Mojo screams. Your ragtag team of heroes is just one more scene before your debut, or before your debt to Mojo is paid. In this corner of the multiverse, Mojo considers himself a hero and is filming his epic Western hero masterpiece. This scene needs more spice. Add some personal foils. This scene will start with a bang. Gunsmoke theme intensifies. All right, set up. Deal each player face down encounter card. Let's go ahead and do that, because why not? There you go. Um, special rules. After a weapon card is attached to crossbones is discarded, deal the first player face down encounter card. Yay. Um, as a team, in, uh, engage in battle with crossbones. When the scenario is completed, go to campaign 2A for the next setup. All right. So we're going to set up, we created the experimental weapons deck over here and set it next to the main scheme, scheme. and then we're going to flip this. Crossbones is leading an army of Hydra soldiers. Well, I guess we ignore that theme because we have our own one revealed. Reveal the top card of the experimental weapons deck. Boom. Uh, when attached, uh, villain attacks, it's attacks gain ranged. I think that is okay. You don't have any retaliate, do you? I do not. Uh, plus one attack is never great, though. Um, do, do, do Search the encounter deck and discard pile for crossbones machine gun and attach it to him and shuffle the encounter deck, which we already have. Uh, so it's going to be great. It's got four counters on it, uh, and he's piercing right now. So toughness, not wonderful. Uh, do you want to go first or you want me to go first, Terrence? 
Doesn't matter to me. I can go first. All right. So you are using um, Nova uh, Aggression, and I am using Wolverine Aggression because we said let's kill some people. And uh, well, it's either going to go really fast or well, it's going to go really fast fast no matter what, right? (laughs) Oh, I do have Precision Strike. Uh, Yeah, it's not going to defeat anybody, so that's not great. So I'm going to spend my Power Novus and Vivian. Unfortunately, Vivian can't blank the environment, which made me a little sad. I thought that would have been cool uh, if I could do that. Um, Honestly, Vivian was kind of MVP ally for me this past weekend of blanking all the terrible things. Vivian's pretty good. Got to be honest. Um, So I'll pay that while to put that into play. Yep. Um, Helmet's good. Helmet is good flip and you get to ready it right after you use one of nova's yeah, basic powers exhaust. ready it so it's kind of like quicksilver but like better home <laughs> technique for powering all of us and a helmet okay home technique seems good to i might not have a monster opening turn but it seems like a I, I've got How'd you get Moon person. Girl out? Oh, you paid three mental resources and just drew those three right back up? Yeah, I paid this and that. Oh, nice. So All right. Well, good. you have a Chumper. A three health Chumper. Yeah, which... I'm not I'm not even going to use her. I'm just going to have her for three health. Well, you could take uh, two of it from the whatever, and then you could block the attack, right? I mean, they all have overkill, so it doesn't matter. Wait, does he have overkill? Yeah. Well, well, Mojo, dude. That's what I was saying. That's why I wanted to play protection originally. Ah, uh, each enemy attack gains overkill. Yeah. Oh, Actually... and everybody takes plus one damage also. So that yeah. also means when they attack, that's right. When they attack or thwart or whatever, they take plus one consequential damage as well. So it's great. Pot shot for four. Uh, wait. So pot shot. So Spend it'd be five. Better. Right? Yep, five. Uh, no, no, no. I already He did. should have 28. He was at 28, so he should be down 20. 23. Three. All right. I was confused. Uh, attack for one. Two. And then pitch back for another four. I mean... Or no, pitch back for another five, so six. I mean, that seemed good. Why? 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 Why five? Oh, because of uh, four than the yeah. Home technique. I mean, home technique turn one seems real good. Yeah, it's really about that good turn three that I'm looking at. <laughs> um, so I got weapon X and gene X, but I also have a hand cannon and forge. What are you thinking? Are you are you doing long play or short play? I mean, short play, really, I guess, right? So I guess I go with Lunging Strike, taking damage. Oh, I'll have to take a fourth damage for that. Do I just do yes, G- Gnex and then pay for Lunging Strike using Gnex? Like like a chump? And, I, and then just hang on to my health? <laughs> I mean, it turns out health is probably nice at 10 when you're getting hit in the face with a machine gun that does plus one damage and an attack. What's Logan's cap Or encounter cards. Allows you to shuffle cards back in your deck. Yeah, that's not great. All right. So get Gene X out. And yeah, it's not going to be great. One, two. Are you doing it? You going to lunging strike? Three off the rip? for lunging strike. No, 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 I paid okay. resources for it, though. Yeah. Right? So that's nine damage. Seems like a good way to go. And then another three. And then another three myself. I feel like you were the MVP of that turn. But I can hit him for three at the beginning of next turn. Flip him. Yeah, for, I, I thought you would uh, I thought you would out-damage me, but... You know. Well, if if I wanted to take four damage, I probably could out damage you, but that seems like a terrible idea. Uh, and I actually don't but even do you, think I'm going to hold But do you forge. just want to go for champions next turn? Oh, you have go for champions? I do my this hand. 
That would, yeah, no, that would have been nice on this opening turn, but you know, I got into what, the fray, but that's about it. Yeah, I'm not even gonna do much damage next turn either, honestly. Um, I got into the fray just in case there was bad things to worry about. All right, so where are we at? Uh, ready up drop. Yep, I already did that. So uh, first things first, we're gonna add two threats to the main. And then, oh, sorry, I have not paid attention at all to the chat. So we got Mary out there, says Vivian is great. Uh, we got Clueless Argruer, says hello. Hello, Clueless. Uh, I'm just going to call you Clueless unless you want. Oh, and we got Roland uh, 1L out there. It says, hey, guys, really great to meet and play with the two of you this weekend. Yes, and Roland, we will be talking about that. And thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, we're going to go through this first scenario. The reason we decided to go double aggression is just so hopefully we can finish this quicker one way or another. Uh, <laughs> that way we could talk a little bit about the con when we're done. Um, did, did, did you see that card played at the con? Which one? One way or another. Come on, Peter. One way or another. I'm going to find you. What, what do you think about Mary's comment? What if Peter plays better drunk though? Oh, what are we saying? Because I'm not drinking? Because of the uh, lack of shadows? No, when I said that you should drink every time one of the standard oh, cards come out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, anybody who played with me at the con, I, I mean, I don't think I ever got drunk drunk, but I was definitely drinking all day, every day. And the funny part was, well, I guess did, I'm did they, spoiling Did they over. have alcohol all day on Friday? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they didn't have lunch for you, just alcohol. Yeah, That's... no, the, the bar... The bar was open the first time I went there. I was trying to go before everybody entered the the place and have a drink in hand when everybody walked in, but I was too busy helping set up. So uh, well, let's talk about all this after. We'll talk about uh, all of the stories from this weekend after we get done. All right, so we are all set up. He is attacking you, Terrence. What are you doing? Just taking it to the face? Uh, no, I got to do this machine gun first, dude. Right, that's what I'm asking. Yes. So. Uh, you don't decide. This is indirect. All right. So this goes down to three. Uh, so one. that'd be one. Doesn't matter I what you put I on again. Eat that, right? Yep. Or should I? I mean, just put one on there, and then it doesn't matter because it's overkill, right? The question is, are you defending? Put two on here. Why two? There's only one damage. Oh, yeah. One extra. Yeah, wild, anytime. wild, come on. Yeah, anytime anything takes any damage. Oh, wait, I did four damage at the end then. No, um, you did three. No, you are correct. I did three. <laughs> so what was the boost? Two. So that's four, five, six damage. Straight to you. Straight to me. All right, well, I'm going to take the machine gun blast, and then we'll see where we're at. So that's three. So three. Do I defend this? Don't, don't die on this opening turn. Do I defend this? Let's see. I don't really have any attack cards for next turn. Do I just, I'm going to take it to the face. We'll see what happens. So this is going to be attack for three plus boost of nothing. Your nemesis, uh, if your nemesis minion is in play, you are confused. Otherwise, place a threat on the main scheme. I will take that any day. Did you already add that? Yeah, I did. All right, so I just took the four damage. Just the four. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I got I got better. <laughs> Turns out might be really good for this game. All right. Uh, go ahead and take in the counter card. I got mine. Boom, boom, boom. One revealed. Reveal your set aside nemesis minion. The villain attacks your hero. If your nemesis minion is in play, do not give the villain a boost activation. There you go. Good news. You don't have to give the villain a boost because your nemesis is now in play. Yeah, but I'm probably going to die. I mean, are you? You take four. So, yeah. So you got to jump. No, I mean, I still have to do machine gun, dude. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. Uh, zero. That's good. Freaking God. Uh, do you want to defend? Hold on. So he's attacking for three, four. So four. So unless you defend or chump, you're dead. So if I def if I Chump. Chump, you have one life left. If you defend, you have two life left and an ally. <laughs> I don't think it's a choice here, right? <laughs> oh, unless you're trying to get that resource back. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, I think I just defend. Yeah, What's this card for? Because this... we get two. Remember, we got one at the beginning of the game. Because nice. it's not hard enough. Nice. Discard X from the encounter deck, where X is crossbones attack. Take one indirect damage for each boost icon. So his attacks yeah, three. Yeah, I die on this. <laughs> so, turn one death. One, two. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> dead. <laughs> I mean, you're real dead. That was five damage indirect. All right. Good news, Terrence. Good news. I saved the setup. So we <laughs> I mean I I feel like I feel like you're not rushing him down with ten health heroes like on three four encounter cards on the opening flop. I mean Terrence. Oh you have a little faith. Uh so if you want we can change out heroes. Do you want to do that now or do you want to um I have another hero. <laughs> wait, what am I doing? Um wait, you're switching heroes? Yeah. What's the name of the Modular. Which one? Or the uh, the environment? Wild Wild Mojo. No, no, no. The environment. That Wild we Wild Mojo. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah. Why? Why don't you believe me? I don't know. Cause you sound like you're a liar. All right. Is it stop not called Wild Wild Mojo? I got it. I got it. Stop surging. All right, so who are you right. playing? That's a good question. Um, pin down. Do I want pin down? How about some stun and confused? Especially stun. How about some stun? Huh? How about some stun? It seems good, right? Yeah, you really just have to survive this machine gun. All right, I'm going to go ahead and draw my hand up, and while you're deciding what hero to play, hey, I think I'll, I'll survive the machine gun. I got Endurance and Hulk in my starting hand. Did not get any. oh I got Sunfire too. Uh we can get rid of his weapon. Wait, is that what Sunfire does? Yes. You have to use a energy Lightning resource. Resource. Energy. Come on, Peter. Get the name right. What's this one do? After attached villain it attacks and damage you discard you a card from your hand. That seems terrible. Right? Doesn't seem great. All right. I think I'm doing Hulk and Sunfire. No, I can't even do that. Sunfire and Endurance? I am going to have to take an extra card for getting rid of, of this experimental weapon, by the way. Does that still That's seem fine. worth it? Uh, unless you want to discard a card. It's even worth it. All right. Well, this is not going to be the blowout firsthand. I do have a Lunging Strike, but it's got to go. Sunfire is played along with the X gene to pay for the lightning to remove this garbage. Uh, then I take an encounter card. Because why wouldn't I? In, in just playing Endurance? Yes. I mean, do you not want me to have three more health? I mean, I know it seems wimpy, but it seems like the right call at this point, right? Sure. Attack for three. All right. Uh, black hat. Uh oh, we got a lot of a lot of comments. On May with uh scientist, Boop up. Wasteland says oof. Clueless says what a rough start. Brant says this setup is brutal for crossbones. So much damage to contend with. Uh, if he draws an assault, you are toast. And then Mary says, "Yes, sir." Love Sunfire. Yes, Spider Woman would be fun for this. Um, says Clueless. Uh, yeah. I mean, I love Spider Woman in general. Oh, she stuns and confuses a minion, right? 
Are we talking the ally yeah. or the hero? I mean, the hero, obviously. You know who'd be good is Miles. With some stun and confuse. He would be. I mean, Spider-Man's good, too, if we could all web up. Are you done? I am done. I mean, you put out some protection-y stuff. I, I, I like your... I put out one protection-y thing. I like your... She's gonna, just gonna, she's just gonna ping for two every turn. That's gonna be fine. Wait, why didn't you let me be first player? Fine, you're first player. That's fine. Um, Because like, I was playing while you were setting up. Ooh, I got okay. my anim adamantium skeleton. That makes me very happy. Oh, health, health seems good. Oh, stun and confuse a spider girl, not spider woman. I do have spider girl in case we get a minion. Uh, spider woman's the one that reduces, uh, you reduce her cost for every confused person out there. Got it. All right. Machine gun. Uh, to you. Yeah, I mean, I, one, I think I'd take that. Two. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's one Attacking me. plus one. What you doing? All right. He's attacking me. Okay. Backflip. Seems good. Does two damage to him. Oh, if you were first player. Wait, who gets this? First player I do. gets this. Give yeah. It to me. Um, not the player. Who... Um... I say you don't defend for me. I got extra health and... Um, Honestly, there's just no reason for it, right? Um, because if we get attack cards here, we're in trouble. So I Well, bet. you you can still defend for me, right? Sure. So do you want to defend this Let's one then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Let's do it. So you defended that last one because you played a Spider-Man defense card, right? Yeah. So I also draw a card, which I forgot to do. So he's going to take two damage from Retaliate. Or did you already do that? I did. All right, I'm playing never back down. Defending for five. So I that's can defend for five. four. Wait, hold on. Oh, uh, hold on. So that's hold on. Stop, stop. First, first things first. That's your two damage of whatever. Now you're defending Eight for five. minus two, six, five. Right, because you take a third one. Um, now he's attacking you for three. Oh, yep. this is down to I one. Defend though. all that. Machine gun's almost gone. Turn one. Good job. No, it's down to two. Down to two. Then it's second attack. He attacked you. Then he attacked. Oh, this only is second attack. Never mind. Yeah. You're correct, sir. So now he's. <clears throat> now what? He's stunned. That seems good. It seems like you did something useful there, Terrence. I, I approve. And I am still at 13 right. health, which means I could have been more aggressive. But I will be more aggressive next turn. Hey, look at you. I mean, oh, it's fine. I'm fine with that. Green surge. I mean, discard the obligation. Uh, I'm less happy about today. Uh, oh, Julie's strength. Like, uh, put four more on that. <laughs> All right, so hero, find your nemesis minion and reveal it. In expert mode, this minion gains toughness, which we are in expert mode, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, I feel like I'm okay lighting that pop and just taking the four. What do you mean? I have a cancel in my hand. So we're not bringing out your nemesis? You know what's I mean, I feel like you can just kill it, right, with slice and dice? Wait, we did let it come out then. Yeah, I was saying, like, I think if you have slice and dice, we just well, let it come out, right? Well, why did you take four? Because he has quick strike. Oh, I didn't realize your dude had quick strike. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I have... I'll, uh, I'll, flip, I'll flip down and I bought main, right? Yeah, I have adamantium armor, which gives my attacks, it makes my attacks three and piercing. Uh, and I also yeah, and then the, the Wow Wow Mojo will let you one shot him. Yep, so exactly. And I, I have Slice and Dice also, which I will probably use paying four with my health. Right. I could also just stun and confuse him, by the way, for a turn or two uh, with Spider Girl 
if we wanted to. That might not be terrible either if you don't want to deal with them. But I feel like slicing dice makes it pretty good. I mean, slice it, but I also want to get adamantium skeleton, so I probably won't put spider girl in, right? Yep. All right. Reveal your cards. Okay. One revealed. Reveal your set aside nemesis minion. Each nemesis minion attacks the player they're engaged with. Well, that's. Can you cancel I'm that? I'm canceling that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, Thank you, Candy Hawk. <laughs> yeah, because you already got your nemesis. So, uh, to be fair, I saw this and approved the card design, so you can probably blame me too. <laughs> uh, it does gain surge though, because no attacks. Or oh, it cancels all. No, one I canceled revealed. it when revealed. Come on. Yeah, yeah, nice. Insight one. Oh, we forgot to put threat out by the way. Uh, so insight one. Uh, when revealed, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a weapon attachment is discarded. Now, this was pretty terrible because there's not that many weapons in here. Oh, that was not terrible. Uh, attached to a minion with the most remaining hit points. If you cannot, this card gains surge. Attachment gets plus three hit points. Fine. It's still fine. I'll still kill him. That's actually even yep. better. Do you, do you like how, as the protection player, I'm down to one health on the opening turn? I mean, to be fair, you didn't let me take any damage to use my healing factor. So, it's all good. I I, I am not going to complain about any of that. You do have Aunt May, so you can just flip down and heal for... I mean, that, that's a big reason why eight. I did it, right? Yeah. It was just like... Heal, and heal I'm going to have at least nine. Sunfire out. And probably just Sunfire. Um... I mean, you just attack for three, right? Well, right, and then slice and dice, and it'll just be dead, dead. All right. So do I hold Spider Girl, or do I hold Angel? Angel gives me one more health. Spider Girl gives me the stun and confuse, but only on a minion. I mean, I assume I don't hold Precision Strike, right? Or do I? I mean, Precision Strike's three damage right now. That's not bad either. All right, maybe I just hold Precision Strike, right? I mean, Spider Girl won't be bad if uh, Nemesis or other things come out. Actually, I don't know how bad Omega Red is. Omega Red steady doesn't matter. Not great. Yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna actually hold Precision Strike, not the Allies. Although I did discolored Hulk already, and Sunfire's already out, so there's not that many more Allies in my deck. So maybe that's not the right call. Uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold Angel. It's only one more health. Um, to put, and I'm putting in the adamantium armor. So that gives me plus one attack and piercing, but also four hit points, which seems good. Uh, slice and dice, I will pay for it with my uh, Wolverine's Claws, which means I take four damage, because why wouldn't it just hurt me more? Uh, so I'm going to do four and four. Uh, that kills him. Uh, and... So do you have to draw a card? Is that what that says? When it's detached from Mojo, I believe. Just from the villain or any? Uh, after a after weapon a we card is attached yeah, attach. to crossbones cool. is discarded. Yep. So, nope. Don't have to draw jack nothing. And then I attack for three attack right now, which will be four, one, two, three, four against a stunned crossbones, which makes Mouth happy. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you for stunning him. I totally appreciate that. I uh, mean, I'm plus attack with Sunfire, right? Uh, no, because he will die of consequential damage. Oh, yeah, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, because it's plus one to all damage. You want to see my amazing turn? I'm going to attack for Black Cat. You're going to kill Black Cat? No, she has no consequential. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I guess you, you just don't... I feel like you don't play enough Spider-Man. I, just I never play Spider-Man because you always play Spider-Man, which is totally fine with me. Uh, I got Spider-Girl. Who needs a spider man when you can have a spider girl terrence uh i think spider girl didn't just protect you and then stun them the enemy i mean she may have oh did you do we did we do the retaliate on my electrostatic i i asked the first time and you said yes the first time for backflip i did yes the second time we did not i did not anyway mansion hella carrier quinn carrier i mean it seems good all right, we want to check any chat, or you've been. Uh, what do we got? Oh, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, Brant says pheromones stuns and confuses any enemy. Yep, seems good. 
Terrence draw a card. Oh yeah, you already got that. Uh, Brombe says, yeah, my group at the con did this on standard mode, and we didn't start with the show card out. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's probably the smart way to play. Well, you know, you and I are. If you've ever seen us play Marvel Champions, this is what we do, right? Uh, flip Terrence. I feel like you say it's my fault every time, but I feel like you just sign up for it now. I, I do. I do. So Brant says, flip Terrence so you can have some cookies. That was in reference to Aunt May feeding him. And Terrence responded, cookies, so good. So good. Yeah, but I feel like what she's actually feeding me is just painkillers, just looking at this picture. <laughs> That's true. Painkillers <laughs> in a blanket and water. It's like I have a hangover. What is that little screwdriver thing she's got going on? Is that like a cotton swab? Is she like? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she's yeah. got a little cotton swab to like totally heal you to full. We well, uh, know I've been so clumsy. I come back home with one one help. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So we are up to five. This is about to pop in a second, and we do get an extra card. But we're alive. We're alive. Okay. Um. So he's going to attack me with the entire deck because that's what we do, Terrence. That's what we do. But he's stunned. So he's not attacking me, but he's going to scheme against you. Yeah, this is going to pop. I think we're okay with that. Uh, give the villain a tough status card. If you cannot heal three damage. Man. That's are... that's the weapon. Oh, no, that's from... No, that's the weapon. This is the weapon. What? You got to do the, you gotta do the uh, thingy. Oh. Oh, wait, no, he's stunned. This is his scheming. That is his scheming against you. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. use his gun when he... Come on, man. He's t- stunned. Or not stunned. I gave him stunned again. That would have been awesome. <laughs> he, he pulls a, a boost card that's like, the villain is stunned. That would be great. Uh, so it tells me they're never going to do that. But he does add two more. So that means this first one pops. Uh, one revealed. We well, already did all that. He's doing something else over here. One revealed. The top experiment. Right, I guess Sunfire could thwart or something. I guess that's a thing. Uh, still going to take a consequential damage. Just it. as a FYI. We do need to get rid of this, and Sunfire's already out now, so that's not great. I'm going to start with two on this. I mean, I feel Take like... Your it, card. Uh, two cards, in fact. Oh, why am I taking experimental weapons? <laughs> so is this just plus one, plus one? Yeah. It's actually not the worst thing in the world. When we're already getting plus one damage, like one more. What, what's one more damage, Terrence? Honestly, Tats or crossbones. Two more damage. Uh, well, the first five damage has to go on this. I. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like an aggression problem. Yeah, well, tough plops first, right? Yeah. Oh, hey, look, we can't take threat off the main scheme. Aren't you sad? Uh, one reveal, discard one per player cards from the top of the encounter deck. Place an additional threat here for each boost icon. So, discard two cards. That's one. Just the one. So, that was it. Hinder two. So, that's five. Yeah. Guess what's never happening? Any threat being removed from that? Not ever happening. Um, well, racing to kill him, that, that's a Wolverine problem. Yeah, there's uh, the stupid armor. We're going to take another encounter card for that, too. And this stupid encounter card we're taking here. Are you going to clear that? I mean, I, if you clear this, we have to clear this, right? Why? Because you can't kill any Nemesis minions. Each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile. Oh. I mean, we just burn, right? Turn and burn? I mean, I don't know that I can turn and burn that great, but we're going to try. Uh, so you're first. What are you doing? Yep. Just putting Quinn Carry out. Wait. He's not webbed up. What? You're like, I'm fine, Ter- Peter. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, so you do yeah. five between you. Which gets rid of this, right? Yeah, but tough goes first. So you are you doing tough things first? I can uppercut. Let me uppercut to get rid of it. All right. So I take three damage. Oh well, I get two health back at the beginning of the turn. Then I take. It's not your turn yet. Four. So you... Well, either way, is that true? Is it the beginning of my turn? 
after the player yep. phase begins. Uh, That's player all players. Phase begins. Yeah, so I did it right. So I gained right. two at the beginning of the player phase. Then I spend four for uppercut using my claws because that's an action, so I can do it out of turn. Play the yep. event, ignoring the S, uh, gains piercing. So uh, piercing five damage. So tough goes away, and so does this. You are first okay. player, Terrence, so I have a gift for you. It's like you're playing the Star-Lord this game. So you're going to do two damage and three damage for a total of five? What's your... Yeah, five. And then... Would Precision Strike heal me if we defeat a stage of the villain? Yes, sir. So do I kill off Sunfire here? Just so That does what, three? Yeah. So he's down to five? Yeah. And then Precision Strike. That seems good. But then I get these two cards sitting here. You just drop one. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, the alternative is you could threat something down, I guess. I mean... And then draw two cards. Do we really want to do that? No, I'm just saying that's your other option. That <laughs> really You're like, no. All right. So Sunfire's attacking for three damage. I'm attacking for four damage. Well, I guess the question is, do we want to flip him right now, or do I hold on to Precision Strike for next turn and just put out one of these allies? That's up to you. I mean, I, I guess... I can put actually, an ally out, probably. Well, I can do both. Watch this. I put Forge out, uh, and then I search my deck and discard for an X-Men or X for support. I could still Precision Strike if we really want. He comes into play, though, not the discard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we not want to discard him as well? Uh, I'm just looking for anything that I can burn here. X gene, that's fine. Is it support or an upgrade? Yeah. Or do I play X gene instead of precision strike? And again, hold on. You can't. You're not mutant. You have to flip down. I would have to flip down, and I think that's a terrible idea. So, what are we thinking? Is it's it? Only, it's, it's only it's only thirty more health, man. Is it worth the extra get damage? To... I think it is, right? Sure. It's only one more damage, isn't it? Oh, and he gets another weapon? Is that true? He just, yep. Oh, I don't know about that. Do we just wait for next turn? Sure. So what do I do with Precision Strike? Nothing? You either hold it or you... I mean, I guess you hold it. You want the heal, right? <sighs> what do you At think that point, it? do you just play... If you're going to do that, you don't play Forge. You play Spider-Girl to get the plus one attack, right? Or she? Sorry, I went backwards. There she is. So she'll have an extra attack next turn. I mean, I mean isn't she just going to be once, a light pool? That or she has three, three, three damage, right? Yeah. Versus one. I mean, if you're not going to use X gene to play this, then you put you you play Spider Girl. What are your thoughts? Because X gene I wouldn't have if I get Spider Girl, right? Yeah, I think you just hold it and then try to do a big turn next turn. Pray to God for a good draw. So you say I hold I Precision so. Strike to get that healing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know you're going to be able to eliminate them, right? Yep, with Precision Strike. All right. Yeah. All right, so ready up and draw. Unless he gets tough. That's the only reason you no, would be able to No, because tough, it. I mean, I could Wolverine's Claws it down. Yeah, but then it's just like net zero at that point. Uh, yeah, I do have a lunging you, strike. You, you, and you I can take also two damage uppercut. to heal too. I mean, so I'm not even going to use precision strike anyway, probably. Only if it gets tough. Well, no, 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 no. I'm saying no. I'm going to lunging okay. strike and uppercut probably next turn. Or lunging strike and berserker barrage. Sure. One of those two. Or right. even theoretically into the fray. Well, actually, I'm going to flip them now, aren't I? But that's better because it's in the middle of his activation, right? Or, well, I guess it's too late. We already drew cards. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot about your defensive ability. But he'll get an attack off on, oh, no. Yeah, so his attack against you will be lesser than his attack against me. If that makes a difference to you. 
Um, okay. Because it'll have Go his weapons it. and all that. Okay. Uh, where are we? You put uh, two. two threat. And then yep. you get attacked for uh, cannon first. Gun first. Yep. Lunging straight next turn, potentially. Backflip seems good. Uh, yeah, when you draw that garbage. All right, so you defended, so he does take a damage. Yep, and he advances. Yep. Well, Crossbones says weapon attachment is piercing when revealed. Place the top card of the experimental weapons. Yay? Yep. So he's plus two attack, so he's five attack, and his last machine gun. Okay. So am I taking uh, I'll, this? I'll I'll defend for you. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, I'll play. Desperate well, hold on. Defense. First, 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 first. Let's get this machine gun. Oh, yeah. Garbage. Uh, that's bad. Three damage. I guess so. That's bad, but and this goes away. So guess what? Welcome to more cards for Terrence. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Desperate are you defense. sure you're not playing Star Wars, Star Lord this game? So, what are you attacking or defending with? Defending for five. And we pray to God here because he's attacking for five, right? I mean, this is yeah, this is bad. So it's three How much extra. Is that? Sidestep, prevent three of it. Prevent three, so it actually that's only a two boost. You're right. That is, and, and then he takes a damage from me and my electrostatics. So that's four. So it's electrostatic is one, and then from you is another, and then you prevent all the damage. Does that do anything? So I ready. Oh, ready. Yep. Oh man, Terrence, you are you have you are the protection master. All right, draw your card though, because we ain't out of the woods yet. <laughs> I, I, I can defend for I? you if I need to. By the way, two cards. Why two? Oh God. Yep. All right, Star Lord. Uh, I'm search. placing a threat on the main scheme. <laughs> Instead of what? <laughs> Two damage? Yeah. I mean, I could. T I mean, should I take the no. three damage? No. Go down on one health, then I heal again? I mean, you're going to heal next turn no matter what, right? Oh, no, because you got it all webbed up. Attached to a minion with the most remaining hit points? Yeah, I'm probably going to kill that. Wait, how many does he have? He's the only minion at the time, so he gets it. Oh, but he doesn't get plus hit points. Okay. No. Uh, card short attacks you. Discard the top three cards of your deck. Now that sucks. What is this? Plus four and retaliate. I mean, I think you flip down next turn. I doubt me flipping down next turn. Right, yeah, I, I think we leave this garbage here. You flip down next turn. You web them up. Oh, you don't have webbed up. No, it's fine. I, I'm going to put Black Widow out, actually. This turn, I think. I mean, I'll see how One, far two. I can burn him down. Yeah. Hey. Celebration. <laughs> Not that it matters. Yeah. Let's go ahead and defeat it and have him attack us for more damage. Seems like a great idea. I mean, I'm just... I mean, you could, per you could precision strike this guy if you played that, I guess. I don't know what you're playing this turn. I mean... Yes. I don't know why I would. I could also Berserker Barrage it and really kill it. But let's go ahead and heal two. I mean, I just think I go hog on him, right? Yeah, I think you gotta you gotta I, do the remaining 28, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna Lunging Strike, so I lose four health. But he loses nine health. Which seems good. Down to 19. Th then... I mean, it could into the fray... But I think it's just uppercut, right? Another six health? Yeah. One, two, three, two uppercut. That's six more health. And I attack for four? Yeah. Spider Girl's going to attack for three. And I left him on six for you with two and that. Can you kill it? So it's one. It's one. Wait, two plus three That's is three five. plus two is five. So it's one. And you got Widow. Boom, boom, boom. I can't play. I can't. 
Oh yeah, I can flip down and play Widow. <laughs> Widow! Widow! Boom, boom, boom. Let me use a way oh. All right. So that... I feel like that was never dire for you and only dire for me. Dude, I, I was never below nine health. That's as low as I got the entire game. I, I don't know what you're complaining about. He really didn't even do that much damage. He's like, that was super easy, Terrence. I feel like that was you super easy. You know what's easy. fun is taking all four machine gun attacks <laughs> to the face. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. So this is why you don't doubt the church of Spider-Man protection. I mean, that was amazing. Do, do, do. Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever Wolverine can. Do, 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 do. All right. Before we get into our kind of heroes discussion. So that was some of the fun that we experienced. Although I'll be honest, I played it on standard and I did start with the, uh, the environment in play, which is just what it is. All right. Do we want to read? Oh my gosh. There's lots and lots of comments. We got uh Roland Woolen says, Oh, does he have range with the rifle? He does, so, so he doesn't what, take the retail. So he would not have... So he's two health less? More? He's oh, no. getting like four, four, four health. We got one more turn. No! Do, do, do. What kind of rifle gives him ranged? Oh, yeah. The right. good ones? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I feel like uh when start what there I feel like there was someone who had a gun and I was well, just like on, doesn't this on, give on. him range? Oh yeah, Venom's pistols. Venom's pistols don't give him range, neither do Star Lord's guns, by the way. They don't have range. Yeah. Trust me, I know. Yeah. So hold on. I, I am I do have a decision here though. Cause knowing now that we are not killing him, do I So hold on. He would add two more health because this still goes off, right? No, he does he Oh wait, it does because no, this no, yeah, I don't have retail. I don't have retail, so he's actually dead. Wait, wait, where? Because where was the this other? This is not game? retail. This is deal one damage. Yes, after you defending it, side it's step is deal one damage. So I actually don't have any retail. Oh, boom, boom, boom! So he is dead. He is actually dead. <laughs> See, don't try to don't try to kill us. Whoever that was in the chat, <laughs> you're saying don't trust the chat. That's basically what you just said. Don't no, I said don't try to kill us, chat. Um. Yes. Yeah, because because th that range is just for retaliate specifically. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's have. what the black dog said. Um, electrostatic armor yeah. isn't retaliate. Nice. Um. All right. Is that is that how fast your crossbones game went? It, it did not. It did not. We we had the two fast. I mean, we finished two games in fifty eight minutes, Terrence. Although the first game I feel like was three minutes. In the second game. I mean, I did. died on turn one, dude. I was you, remember on before the stream. I was just like, "There's a real possibility one of us will die on turn one." Like I called it. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> like, no. like a ten health hero, right? Like, um, somebody said X gene doesn't count, so I couldn't have pulled it. But guess what? I could have pulled any card, X mansion, X whatever. Oh yeah, because it's not traded. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't count. It says it's support or an upgrade. It's it's not X Men or X Force. Oh, okay, traded. well that's, that's fine. I, I have X Mansion in my deck. I, I have lots of other things that I could pull, obviously, or I wouldn't have put Forge in. So it is fine. Well, I never used it anyway. We decided to put what's her uh, Spider Girl in instead. Ah, so Jay Atkinson says it has to be a support. It needs to be X Men or X Force traits. Well, like I said, I do have X-Mansion in my deck, so I could have pulled that out. But we never used it anyway, because we decided to go with Spider-Girl. Because you were right, we needed that extra damage. Uh, although, no, because we had one extra damage. So, see, Terrence? Would have been fine. Everything's fine. All right, you want to talk a little uh, bit about Kana Heroes? Yeah. So I'm going to do a whole podcast intro real quick, because uh, we will... Probably use this as a podcast. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right. Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Your one stop for co-op news, reviews, and playthroughs. I'm Peter and 
I am talking with Terrence, and that is a terrible introduction. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> uh, all right. Hello, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for co-op news, reviews, and playthroughs. And today, we are talking about Marvel Champions, specifically the Con of Heroes. I'm Peter, and I'm here with Terrence. What's up, Terrence? How's it going? Good, good. And together, we are the CCGers, the Cooperative Card Gamers. I, I, you know, we'll see if that tagline sticks. I don't know. I don't know. That's going to stick. But for now, that's that's in there. What do you think, Terrence? Do you like that? Yeah, it, it, we're workshopping it. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, <laughs> it'll come together in the coming weeks, I think. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about Kind of Heroes, which is a Marvel Champions specific convention where you go and we played... What do we have? We had one scenario, no, two scenarios, right? And then we had a campaign, a three mission campaign. And then we had a bunch of challenge cards that our very own Terrence designed himself. Is that right? Is uh, that there was also the Epic multiplayer. So there was on Friday, there was the Magneto event to kind of kick, kick us off and get people familiar with talking to other tables. I and guess then we had was... the Epic multiplayer event. Yeah, I was counting that as one of the scenarios, but we'll go over we'll go over those one by one um, as we get to them. But uh, that's the basics, right? Yep. And then yeah, yeah. So Mary's crying because she was unable to make it. We're sorry, Mary, but a bunch of people did sign a play mat for you, so you got more signatures than probably anybody else at the convention, even though you weren't there, um, because pretty much everybody came up and signed it. I feel like. Um, all right, but before we get into it, let's talk a little non-Marvel champions. Let's talk about the games we played at the convention or in the days of the convention that weren't Marvel champions. Give people who are just turn, tuning into the podcast, podcasts who aren't Marvel champions fans, let's talk to them first, and then we'll get into all our Marvel champions geekiness, and they can uh, tune out if they want to. What do you think? I, I didn't realize those people existed, people who aren't Marvel Champions fans. <laughs> All right. So the first game I played was on Thursday night, the night I arrived. And I played with... Uh, well, we played two games that night, actually. Well, you played part of one game with us. <laughs> so it was with Colin Barrett and you. It was at Colin's house. First thing we played was Dark Dealings, which is a game that Mike and I designed. And we played the co-op variant, and we were just kind of giving it some final testing before we released it to the public. Actually, I've given it to the publisher to release to the public whenever, so I think he wanted to graphic design it up a little bit. But maybe I just put a PDF on Board Game Geek so the owners of Dark Dealings can actually um, play that now. But we played that co-op, and that is always fun. I'm not going to review my own game. Did you play enough of it to give any thoughts at all? I thought it was cool. Um uh, I I enjoyed. I guess. Do you want to give a premise of it of your own game at all, or are we just skipping past that? Uh, yeah, we could give a premise. Which you're all evil wizards fighting against heroes, trying to take you down. In the co-op version, you have a total of three life, uh, so they're attacking you. So you can let three heroes get through, um, but the fourth one that gets through defeats you. And so um, yeah, you're using spells, traps, and monsters to defeat them. Uh, each hero has kind of unique abilities to them, but um, yeah, and it's done in a very simple drafting way. It's like a 20 minute game. Uh, again, normally cooperative or competitive, but uh, we just came up with a co op rule set for it and it's working pretty well. So now back to Terrence. Yeah, I, th I think it's a neat little puzzle. Um, it, it very much feels like a resource management, uh, kind of like very much a min maxer kind of. You know, you have these threats and you're trying to figure out the optimal way to use the kind of, you know, uh, arsenals at your disposal. Um, and then you have kind of the different types, right? Like the traps, uh, the spells, and then the just normal attack stuff. Is that right? The Monsters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, monsters, yeah. Um, but uh, what I heard afterwards was that I don't trust Barrett to give you things that you can deal with. <laughs> uh uh, so there's a part of the game where basically when you're doing the drafting of enemies, you give one to your left and one to your right, and then you keep one for the middle. Is that right? 
you keep one for yourself or you put one in the middle. It depends on yeah, the player count and everything else is going to be different based on yeah. player count. And so I, I heard after I left that Barrett gave me, uh, while I was there, it was when we did the drafting and gave me some stuff that I just couldn't deal with. Uh, yeah. Because different monsters obviously have different affinities of like what they're vulnerable or weak to. So you can see what everyone has kind of in front of them of like arsenals. And he looked at mine and gave me this one thing. <laughs> to, to be fair, I probably did a not good enough job explaining what was going on. Uh, so I, I'm going to blame that on the teacher in that situation. If he didn't know that you couldn't handle what he gave you, that's probably my fault. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't play it super long, but I, I thought there was definitely for, you know, for what it is there, the fact that you can play it pretty quick. I, I think it has enough there to like make it interesting. Cool. Um, all right, so that is Dark Dealings, which I don't even think you can buy right now, um, although I think it's going to be coming out soon enough from um, Dice Hate Me Games, so they now have the rights to that one. Uh, they have copies of it, but their online store was having issues, so as soon as they get that fixed, they will be available for sale again, uh, and there will be a co-op uh, expansion. There's already solo play available for Dark Dealings. All right, so that was Dark Dealings, but then after you left, we ended up playing Project Elite because Colin Barrett and I realized we all love that game and we never get to play it. So Project Elite is a like monster killing game, like alien killing. You're all uh, like space marines. You're fighting against aliens who are coming in, but it's all done in like a real time. I don't even know, like six or ten minute session, and then you kind of stop and do like a reseed the board scenario, and then you go again, fast paced, frantic. So if you like that kind of stuff, it is my favorite real time game. I feel like uh, it's a little more complex than a lot of these other ones, and there's miniatures on the board, and they're moving around, and you're rolling dice after dice, and you're trying to hit certain symbols and then if you hit them that to fire your weapon then you're rolling your weapon dice which are just regular d6s and it's utter chaos it's literally utter chaos but there is nothing to get your blood pumping in my mind like project elite and it's just fun wackiness and you're just throwing minions off the board and you're not paying attention to what's going on and then after it's all done you're like okay now let's slow down and breathe kind of figure out what's going on the board and you realize what a terrible job you did and they all start attacking you and killing you. Um, so it does not seem like a Terrence kind of game. Have you played Project Elite before? Yeah, it was one of Colin's favorite games, so he brought it out. I mean, I, he's like a big fan of real-time games, right? Um, yeah. And so I think he brought it out during one of the first Con of the Rings I went to and I stayed over. Uh, yep. And we played it with Steve. Uh, it was fun. Uh, I, I think you're right. It's not. It's not too much chaos for me probably yep. uh and i think it's it like you know he has a pretty big table uh so i think it's like also hard to like reach sometimes in a like four player version of that game oh yeah four so, like, players move easy. move the <laughs> yeah like move the thing where i need to where everyone's like trying to do that uh yeah yeah uh, so it's it's chaotic fun um but if you don't like chaos you don't like dice rolling luck there, there's a lot of things that a lot of people aren't going to like it about in the game. Uh, I don't think Mike or Jerry like the game at all. Um, so, but they're they're not real time chaotic fans either. Uh, so there's that. But I like it a lot. Colin likes it a lot, and Barrett likes it. So you got to kind of feel feel yourself out for what kind of uh, whether you like that or not. I think that's probably enough of a description to know whether you're going to like it or not. Um, now, the one thing I guess I'll say is it's pretty expensive. And I don't even know if it's available anymore for something as, I don't even know that I'd call it light, but I mean, at the end of the day, it is kind of light. Um, but there's a lot of cool miniatures in it and you're like, I don't know. It, it, it's probably too expensive for what it is, but yet I'd still pay for it again. So it's hard for me to, I guess, say it's too expensive for what it is when I'd be willing to pay for it. So uh, I enjoy it. You know that that's all you need, right? Makes it worth it. Yeah, uh, I mean it's yeah, it's I don't know. For me, it's just fun. Like there's no way to describe it. Like if I described all the mechanics to myself, I could probably you know nitpick it to death and come up with fifty things that are wrong with it. But 
none of that matters when you're playing and throwing aliens off the board and like you got your special hero power and you're going and searching things and you're doing all these things and all in real real time you know there, there's no way that any description is going to describe how fun it is or again i think how frustrated you'd be um if you don't like that kind of stuff <laughs> sometimes just like being on bad days yeah it's a you know it's a thing it is a thing uh so i do have one more game but do you have anything that you played um that was not marvel champions that was not marvel champions while we were there well i know you played at least one game because i saw you playing it over uh, and over you and kennedy hawk on, on thursday well, any day. Or, or just in general? In general, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only other game I played that wasn't Marvel Champions was Ashes Reborn. Um, the Red Reigns, Cor- Corpse of Heroes. So, yep. You want to tell uh, me? You guys played that at least like 50 times, it felt like. We only played it two and a half times. Uh, we had to clean up uh, on opening Saturday, I think, right? Uh, but Or opening Friday. Um, didn't have time to finish our game uh kenny hawk had bought the game but had not played it yet uh and so we were just talking about getting game in so i was able to kind of teach him the co-op version because he's he's played a bunch of actual ashes uh when it was kind of in its original form pre-reborn yep um and has played it post-reborn as well uh and so just didn't know kind of the co-op rulings which aren't honestly that different but you know like you gotta learn how to the ai interacts and and kind of all that stuff yeah i mean the nice part about that game is the ai tar- turns are pretty quick and pretty easy to understand so once you do it a couple times i'm sure he could go home and never have to open the rule book and, and be just fine with it since he knows the base game yeah so yeah that was fun uh we got a lot of people who stopped by just ask us about the game because if anything the game is is pretty right um the artwork kind of wish yeah the, both the artwork being good and then also i i kind of wish more games did do the kind of full bleed promo art style art i think it just looks really nice so is that that's not promo cards though that's all their cards is what you're saying yeah it's all their cards but i like I, fg does it as promo right like it, it is it the kind of promo frameless design yep um and you know just lets the art stand out a little more you know it takes up almost all the card yeah and then i did play one more game on the last day of the convention which is not just marvel champions they opened it up for people to play whatever and there were some people in the back of the room playing a game called deep rock which is about uh apparently it's a app-based game or a computer game that uh it's a video game okay like a co-op a co-op video game rock and stone where you're these like four dwarves basing mining rock for a you know corporation like evil not i wouldn't say evil but just like greedy corporation yep and yeah that's what the game is so this is a full-on miniatures tactical board game where you're controlling a dwarf on your turn you get a certain number of actions i think it's two or three i think it's three actions and you could do things like do your special ability or move three spaces or fire one of your weapons in which case you roll some dice uh, and each weapon has like custom dice. But one of the inter- so a couple of interesting things about the game, um, and, and then you have an objective for the mission. So our objective was to go out and mine these certain things. Um, and mining is an action as well, where you roll this white dice that tells you if you mine one, two, or zero things. Um, you know, so whatever you're next to, you can mine. You can mine regular spots to get yourself gold and other gems, which you can use to like power up your abilities or your weapons. Um, so there was a lot of cool concepts in here. So as an action, you spend one action to mine, roll that dice. Um, but you're these little cool dwarf miniatures, and you also um, have miniatures for the enemies. But I do think they said that was a Kickstarter edition. Normally it'd be like. I think you get miniatures still, but there's standees or there's just tokens for the enemies or whatever. But it was really cool looking with all that stuff on the board. They even had like stalagmites coming out of the bottom of the board that, again, I think were all Kickstarter stuff. But there was a lot of neat concepts to the game. The one thing I found, and we played Mission 1, so take that for what it is. It's t- tutorial. We beat it fairly easily, and some of the powers seemed super good. Like, I had a power that, like, put a shield down, and the enemies couldn't, like, attack you if you're on it, and they couldn't move through it. Now, they could still shoot you, I guess, if you're on the other side of it, but, you know, for the melee characters, 
seemed like we did have a character get knocked down. So for like an action or two actions, I can't remember, you could stand him up. So I just stood another character up and threw a shield down on him. And then they like couldn't attack him again, which was kind of nice. So um, until my turn came back, but then I could throw the shield down again. Apparently this was like something I could keep doing for an action to turn. Um, so we beat it fairly easily, although I guess I say that with, again, one of our characters getting knocked down a couple times. So maybe it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. But, um, yeah, it was fun. And, like, there's, like, a time track, but you draw an event card after every player's turn. And, like, the time track may or may not go up, which could advance things. And, like, the enemies seem to get harder and harder as the game goes on. So there, there was a lot of things to like about it. Um, I enjoyed my entire time playing, but it did feel like it was a little easy at the end of the day, um, with all the cool stuff we had. So, but you know, if you like miniatures games, you know, dungeon crawly type games, I think it had enough unique, cool stuff. And I also think it was straightforward enough to play with families. Um, you know, I'm sure my son would love this game as an example. So that was Deep Rock. I really enjoyed that one. Did you have any interest in it or you done anything? I, I played the demo. I think Steve taught it um, okay. when I was on Kickstarter. Uh, I thought it was fine. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't know if it, it really spoke to me. Okay. Um, like it just seemed like a solid game, but not, it didn't seem like super right. unique to me. Um, I could see that. Uh, and, and, and I know, I know, like uh, some other folks also played it at the con for the first time, and I think they expressed similar things. So, I, so uh, like it was fun, and they would play it again, but they didn't feel like they needed to. They wanted to own it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, I I would like to play it more. Is where I'd leave that. At. I think Steve played it on the channel. So if you want to see some playthroughs, I think we have some on One Stop Co op Shop streamed. Um, I believe Steve played it during Kickstarter, and I think yeah, he... I, I think Steve Steve's definitely a big fan of it. I know Colin's also a big fan of it too. Oh, so there's probably a playthrough uh, on the main channel as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I think Steve got his stuff fairly recently, like within the last few weeks. Okay, I feel like so. he did a Kickstarter preview of it. Maybe he did it on Tabletop Simulator. So, um, yeah, and I I think Colin says he i'm pretty sure colin said he was playing this with his kids and and he really likes it so well that's what i was saying it's very family friendly right like nothing is over complicated in the game so it's definitely oh that's the other game we played i played uno flip totally forgot about that with colin and his family um which is uno but you flip the deck every once in a while and i didn't do very well so that's that's uno flip <laughs> oh yeah that, that was hilarious uh, I, I was there watching you yeah. get utterly destroyed um, it felt like the 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 Degnans versus Peter. Well, at one point, <laughs> I had a wild card and one card left. And as I was putting the wild card down, I did not say Uno. Like every other time, I had been pretty good about saying it pretty early. And Colin called me on it. So I feel like that was my winning opportunity. Because by the time it came back to me, nobody else had changed the color. Now, maybe they would have tried harder. Had I not had to draw like four cards or whatever the heck it is, but yeah. So then I started calling Uno out after I played every card, even when I didn't have one card left. Um, but yeah, I was like, wait, there's no penalty. Sure. Uno. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I, I guess after the con, I played some games cause I stayed with Colin yeah. and, and Baron came over on Monday. Um, and so we of course played ashes, uh, as one does. Um, wait with three of you. I, no, after Baron had to leave, so we played that right before I went got went to the airport. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up because you know I already talked about it. Uh, yep. But I actually bought Colin Ashes, and it was in shrink when I went over to his house. So, you know, I, I taught him the game. Uh, and yep. then the other, uh, we also played v v Valor and Villainy. Oh, yeah. That game. Yeah, Steve loves that game, uh, and Mike loves that game. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> You're not uh, much of a dungeon crawl fan. It's also not much of a dungeon crawl. Uh, I I feel like it suffers from to me like a like it's a fun game. Um, but I think it suffers from the same problem in my opinion of uh, games that try to do both like a boss, a boss part, and like a thing before the boss. So right. like an hour of need, right? Like I think uh, 
the problem is it's basically like two different games that share half the mechanics. And so then like half the game is basically done. And then you just have the combat mechanics at the end. And uh, the villain turns are just way too long, I think, uh, to activate for like what it is. Um, yeah. You can definitely tell it's like it's like a uh, even more so like I, I think Ashes d- does a good job of adding co-op and solo onto an existing kind of PvP game. Right. But you can tell like they added stuff onto a game where like it it mostly works, but it kind of doesn't always fit right. You know, I forgot it was a PvP game first because it to me felt like a co-op game when I played it. Um because you're just like going around exploring dungeon tiles stuff pops up you kill it like that's really a lot of what the game is and then you know once you achieve a goal which is at least for the first mission to explore a certain number of tiles this big boss comes out and then you got to kill it um yeah i, I don't I, know I how like that the, would the... be competitive <laughs> like like seems yeah, weird. I, I don't know i i just felt like the, the boss thing fit, wasn't it wasn't that it was anticlimactic but it just felt like it shut off half the game which is exploration and stuff. Right. Like you don't flip any more tiles over. Like there's no reason to kind of like do a lot of stuff anymore. And so kind of felt like that, like when we were playing hour of me, it's just like, Oh, all the like things you do around the board. Now you don't do them. And now you just fight yes. this boss. So, uh, so I feel like it, it, I don't think it's specific to Valen Bill. I just think there's a lot of board games that try to straddle both of those things. And I feel like it, it is really hard to execute that really well, in my opinion. Makes sense. All right. Did you all play anything um, else? Uh, and again, there are many then, plays of that on both channels. So, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the other game that we played was Monster Hunter. So, so I own Monster Hunter, but I had not played it because it came right before the con. And so, uh, Colin taught Baron to nine Monster Hunter. And I, don't I actually know anything was, about that. So tell me, tell me. Uh, it, it's a, it's a boss battler. Um, so I think it, it gets compared a lot to Primal, even though, because uh, it's a game. Monster Hunter World is a actual video game by Capcom that you can play on your PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and uh, it's a Japanese IP that is like twenty-ish years old. So it's like been around for a long time, but kind of didn't break out into the West until Monster Hunter World. And so they built a board game on that game, uh, okay. and uh, it's done by Steamforge, which isn't the most well-loved, uh, I think, publisher um, out there. It's had some pretty big duds out there like the horizon game but um this is based what i believe off of somewhat of the dark soul system okay uh and so it's uh it's interesting so you're on this like i think it's a five by five board um and there's some terrain but like there's only like three types of terrain they do they don't do a whole lot like if you step on water you have to discard one of your attack cards if you get on a mountain you get a free move uh and then bushes actually like reduce your threat um but i was surprised how good it was uh it you know it's not the most in-depth one but it there's like enough there mechanically that it's pretty interesting so you have a stamina board and you can only put five cards on it and uh unlike uh i think primal and, and monster hunter everything's based around the the monsters so there's only like one monster you're fighting which is the boss okay and uh Basically, it has these like behavior cards that uh, you process of like what it does. And so on the, the back side of the card, you get to see if it targets the closest or farthest hunter, and you get to know which body body part it's going to attack with. So you imagine if you like cycle through this deck a handful of times, you fight this monster a bunch of times, you'll slowly kind of learn to be able to predict uh, what the monster is going to do kind of based off of that information, right? So and, the deck uh, doesn't shuffle? Does it just kind of go back in the same order? Almost like a, it, it does a shuffle. video game. I oh, think it you do shuffle. shuffle it. Yeah. So it is randomized, deeper. but you can kind of recognize, right? Right. Yeah. As you yeah, get deeper yeah. in the deck, you'll see and, what's And then, like, there, there is a choose your own adventure part that is part of the campaign um, that I think is not part of, like, if you do the arenas, which are the one off things. But if yep. you do the campaign, there's like a choose your own adventure where you pick some options and then you, based on them or like whatever points you get, uh, you actually shuffle one of three behavior cards into the deck so there is some randomization okay i don't think it's like a ton but there's a little bit but what is cool actually is so after each attack it tells you how many hunters get to activate like hunter turns get to activate and then how many cards each of the hunters get to play so it can be anywhere from like three cards one card whatever and it's based off of kind of like you know like you can imagine in the video game or whatever like this monster did like a really fast attack 
So you don't have a lot in between to kind of react with. This monster did like a really heavy attack. So now like every hunter can now, you know, kind of wail on the monster, right? Um, and so I thought that was kind of a cool mechanic. And then the way they kind of balance so that the same player isn't always going is that every player has to go once and then you kind of flip your tokens back over, right? And um, then you can start activating. Yeah. And then, yeah, so like so if you, you can't go twice. So if you and uh, let, let's say the monster did a big attack or whatever, they give you three activations. Yep. Could one character activate if they were the last character to have gone out of the four and then activate a second time with after you yep. flipped everybody up? Okay. Yep. So you get to pick who gets to go. Um, it's just like every time you activate, you flip your token down. And then once everyone is activated, you get to flip it up and then anyone can go again. Got it. Um, so, so your attack cards have agility values on it. Um, and basically when a monster does an attack, you can either eat the damage and subtract base your defense value. Um, there's like elemental stuff too. So like if you do fire damage, you don't have any fire me- resistance. You just take all of it. Um, but then they'll also have a dodge value. So then you can clog up your stamina board with like cards by putting them face down um, to kind of dodge the attack completely. Uh, and so one of the things is like, there is a big part that's like stamina management where every turn when you go, um, you get to remove at least, you get to remove one card off of it, but then your your weapon kind of deck that you're using has cards that will obviously help you remove more than that. Um, and so you kind of have to balance and, and every turn you get, it's kind of like a deck building game where you discard down and then you can draw up to five cards. So like any card you don't want to use, you can discard. And then um, there's also a separate kind of like Osworn and, and other games where there's no dice, but you draw like off of a damage deck essentially to decide how much damage you do. And then so uh, similar to uh, Gloomhaven as well, where it's like plus yeah, or minus yeah, yeah. to whatever your base. There's no is. minus. It's it's like basically values from like I think one to four or five or something like that. Oh, okay. And so like, say you do an attack, and you draw one card. It could be in that range based on your weapon. And then if you draw two, you kind of just add the numbers up. Um, uh, the monsters have different armor for different parts of the body. So depending on what side of the monster you're on, you know, you attack which body part. And then certain attacks have breaking value. So then you can also break the monster, which will change its behavior as well or give you more parts. And so kind of the, the summary of it is like you uh, you also always, even if the monster blocks all the damage, you always do a minimum of one. So even those like one point damages still always go through, gotcha. um, which I think is cool. So you never feel bad about you know, like essentially missing or something. Gotcha. Uh, so and yeah, is I mean, there a board? Like I'm trying to picture this. You keep yeah, it's a five by five primal. board. So you're moving, you're moving around the board. So it's not really like primal because primal is like directional, right? No, no, no. Yeah, primal. You're you're only positioning, and this one, the monster can push you. Uh, gotcha. Like if he runs into you, you don't take damage, but he moves you, and then but, you just you only take damage on attacks and stuff. It seems like it's still a pretty small board, so it's still very manageable. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's you can't like kite the monster super well because it's it's just not that big of a board. Right, All right. So it sounds a um, lot like even and Trespass Odyssey or any of these boss battler games. Uh, yeah, adventure tactics. So what are your I, final thoughts on it? Like, I mean, obviously it, I, I don't need a review, but. You know, just I, I think it. I think it's really good. I mean, I haven't played. I've played Osworn, obviously. Um, I think it's it's Osworn is definitely like a deeper game uh, yep. and more complex. Uh, but this one's definitely. I think the like play time to how crunchy it is is pretty good. Uh, like so you can do a battle in probably like th- like forty minutes. I think you can do a battle. Oh wow! Yeah. So like like the for how in depth it is like is pretty good for the time, right? So, like, Colin's excited about it because he can play with his kids with it, another one of those kind of things. Yep. Uh, in this boss battle genre where I think that's harder for, like, you know, he, he says, like, with Osworn sometimes with Barrett, like, they just go over and do a story for a night and they don't even get to do, like, well, the boss battle. Well, that's why I don't do the story stuff in Osworn because it takes too long. I do yeah, a yeah. quick story. <laughs> yeah, so so the Choose Your Own Adventure, for instance, is, like, 10 minutes because it's not a, a deep story. You're, like, Got hunting it. a monster down in that thing. And so, like, in an hour, you can play a, a hunt and do the choose your own adventure and also go back to base and, like, basically build gear, right? So, oh, like, wow. Yeah, um, pretty amazing. It pre- Pretty good for, like, the time, I think. Um, the biggest downside, I think, is just there's a lot of errata. And so we're all waiting kind of for Steamforge to send out the, the errata cards and, and packs. Um, gotcha. kinda Kind of fix that, so... Yeah, you kind of wish publishers would do that before they sent the game out. But yeah, it, it, I feel like they must have just printed stuff from beta 
Um, yeah. Uh, like they, they, I th- it just seems like they sent the wrong print files, like, like in the crafting tree, like there's just clearly like the wrong values <laughs> of like what yeah. they posted with the fix was and like what the errata was and what they gave you. It's just like, it's like, Oh, you only need two bones to like build this piece of armor. And like the one that shipped with the game is like, you need eight. Oh, like, it's like, yeah, what? It's, it's, you know, it's, like, like it's just like major change different. in values. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it, I it just seems like they thought the campaign was going to go longer and then they shortened it after playtesting or something. Right. Yeah. I can see as a publisher how it could happen, though, because as you're playtesting a game, you have all these cards in a file, but then you get the final versions of the cards and like now it's in a different file. Right. And then you play test with the new stuff, with the pretty stuff. And you're like, oh, no, I need to change this value. So now do you change it in the playtest files? Do you change it on the final files? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're just – there's a lot of ways that this kind of thing can get messed up. And um, so, yeah, I, I could see as a publisher how this could happen. Now, how it could happen with all of the cards, that seems weird to me, or, or a, a large percentage of cards. But I could see how one or two could slip through. No question about it. Like, you, I mean – we've looked over files like 10 times now and it still feels like every time we're still catching stuff. So um, just a little insight from the other side, it is not an easy process. That is for sure. Um, and the more cards and the bigger the game, the harder that's going to be. Yeah. There, there's so many cards in this game, man. Like, yeah. Uh, I definitely had to buy, like a set of new sleeves to sleeve the entire game. Cause I think there's like over a thousand or something. I think if you buy the all in. So you just bought a thousand sleeves. Yeah. So you added like you know two hundred dollars of the cost of your game. Come on, Terrence. That's like, it's like twenty bucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sleevers. Um. So speaking of sleeving, you ready to talk some Marvel Champions? Yeah. All right. So everyone I played with had sleeves. <laughs> no, that's not true. My one of my early games I played did not have sleeves. I don't. I didn't. Write I didn't. It down. I, we never played a game, right? Isn't Isn't that true? You and I did not. We were going to play one night, and Mary asked this question earlier, did you play Lord of the Rings? I kept asking you to play Lord of the Rings. Believe it or not, Terrence was the one who kept saying no. I was the one asking. Terrence was the one saying no. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Like, every night, I was like, Terrence, let's play some Lord of the Rings. Never happened. Never happened. You know, i got to play Ashes. Yeah, well, so you're saying no, I'm you just like kidding. Ashes uh... better than Lord of the Rings now? Hold on. Let's, no, uh, I pawned you. I pawned you off on uh, people because they were leaving the next day. I think. Well, I think that's yeah. actually what happened. And, and we did actually try to play with as many different people as possible. Um, so let's let's talk about the convention itself. You know, for even for people who don't like Lord or uh, Marvel Champions, Marvel Champions, they may still enjoy because we're going to talk some an- anecdotes and things like that as well. Um, but let me start with this was actually a pretty good weekend for me. So. Making content. Did you expect otherwise? Well, it to be like a bad weekend. No, no, no. Well, not just the Marvel Champion. Just even outside of the Marvel Champion stuff. So there are two big things that kind of happened, which rejuvenated me to create content again and to I don't know that you know it. You need moments in your life because yes, this is fun. We're playing games, but you know sometimes after a three or four hour recording session, you're like, okay. Like, I just need some breaks, right? (laughs) Like, I can't keep doing this. Um, But there were a couple events that kind of rejuvenated me to want to keep playing. And the first one was Thursday when I went... Well, so first of all, I did play one game at home. Um, So I stayed up till 3 in the morning Wednesday night, knowing that Thursday was just a travel day for me. Stayed up till 3 in the morning, basically throwing my decks together. Um, then I hadn't play tested any of them. So I did play test. I'm like, all right, if I, I need at least one good deck to come to this convention. So I tested my, uh, spider deck and I played against expert Magog Magog with horror and if beat that. And I was like, okay, I at least know I have one deck that will perform when I go there. Um, but then of course, when I showed up, I realized that all my decks were basically the same thing. It was just ally swarm. Um, I was like, oh. Yeah, I don't really have a justice deck. Oh, I don't really have a protection deck. They're all just like, even though I have justice decks, they're just like, I think my spider was my protection deck. And it was really just so I could have Silk as an ally. And it was like really just web warriors. Um, <laughs> like with a couple of healing cards. Oh, it's... I think you just you just wanted to play Lord of the Rings, man. Jump a bunch of allies. You know, you've been playing a bunch of Lord of the Rings. It probably was just like, yeah, that's, 
it's what I do. I mean, I feel like I play Marvel Champions that way sometimes too. It didn't help when the first scenario had overkill, right? Like the scenario you just saw us play today with Crossbones uh, on the streaming channel if you're listening on the podcast. Yeah, it was just a lot of overkill. So guess what doesn't help when there's lots of overkill? Uh, yeah, you've guessed it, allies. <laughs> and especially low-cost allies with now big health pools. Yeah, I, I, I went a different route. Uh, I, I've i been planning for weeks. for the I think like a month out, I was starting to think about decks. Um, and I actually have a Google sheet that I, I think I shared with Mary or something when she was helping me play test some of the decks. Uh, and so, you know, like I, I was having problems of just like actually building all the decks I want to bring because there's just overlap, right? Like there's just a handful of staple cards. Like if you're ever going to put power in all of us, we only have one copy of it, right? Like, yep. uh, I, I, I actually ran out of night nurses. Um, so Mary actually helped me get a bunch of proxies printed. So she like set up a template for me and I ended up pin- printing like 23 proxies where I printed it out, cut them and then put them in front of um, double resource cards. Cause we have a bajillion of them. Right. What? Uh, Never. And, and so I, I put them in. So I had like pr- extra professor X's Maria Hill, like, you know, a bunch of the staples uh, kind of uh, in there. Uh, and so I was up till three in the morning, I think, fully cutting proxies out and putting them into decks. <laughs> well, welcome to the world of prototyping because that's why everything is done on Tabletop Simulator for us now because I just can't anymore. I mean, I literally am done cutting and pasting and, like, whatever. Like, punching and, yeah, I've done so much stuff to make prototypes and over the years, and it's just, it's a nightmare. I mean, I'll do it again, I'm sure, but as little as possible, that is for sure. So what, yeah, especially if you're cha- if you're changing it all the, like the text and stuff pretty often oh. as you're doing game design, it can that can make sense. Um, yeah, you play end up bringing like hour, a like right and realize something's broken, and then you got to spend oh, three yeah. hours fixing it. <laughs> like it's just a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. So I end up bringing like eleven decks to the con. Peter. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I packed a quiver. <laughs> I mean, you could have you could have borrowed any of my decks, but they would have been sleeved. So you got that going. Yeah, for you. I definitely would not have done that. <laughs> um yeah i brought i tried to bring at least two of every aspect and then spider women obviously is like a dual aspect so that didn't really count and then uh i got like a few three copy like a third kind of deck for a few of them um but yeah i, I just wanted to be able to kind of like having played last year and 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 just like learning from even our two-player games of like the difference between solo and multiplayer um which maybe this should be a topic of the co- of of one of our sessions sometime. Is just I've seen um, in some of the videos people are asking like what uh, what what does it take to build a multiplayer deck and how do you approach that deck building and how that's different. Um, oh, it's very. But I just kind of cards have different yeah. values. Um, just think of that one card that removes threat for every player from side schemes for every you know player in the game. I mean that card can be huge i mean it's scenario dependent but it's also player count dependent there's i mean obviously the alliance cards also are other obvious choices you know the higher player count the better um but yeah we will make that a topic so uh and and i think that crosses genres as well i don't think that's marvel champion specific so i think just as a collectible card gamer you know discussion whether we're talking about lord of the rings or whatever else i think Lower player counts versus higher player counts do make a difference when building decks for those games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I just wanted to have a deck kind of for any situation. Um, I tend to show up to a lot of uh, groups that I played with and just let everyone kind of pick a deck and then kind of filled. Um, and honestly, most of the time, <laughs> the fill you needed was protection. So yep. I played a lot of actually protection, Spider Man, and Ghost Spider, um, depending kind of on the flavor. And so uh th- those end up being the most successful decks actually um which was fun because i i like protection but also i think it just lets people at the the play group um kind of do their thing and yep. speaking of solo and 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 multiplayer I, I think protection true solo unless you're doing like certain kinds of builds are a thing that don't sing nearly as well um in solo as it does multiplayer so it's fun to kind of break those out no for sure for sure um, all right, so 
I did say there were two things that kind of remotivated me. So building decks was not one of them. Uh, <laughs> I know. You're oh shocked. darn it! I, I thought I thought that was gonna be it because you spent so long on it. No, on no, your no. Monologue. Um. Yeah, but uh, the one thing is we were, and this didn't happen until the end of the weekend. Um, but there was something that happened in the beginning that kind of rejuvenated me as well. Uh, but at the end of the weekend, we did win or didn't win. We got runner up for best podcast on Board Game Geeks Golden Geek Awards. The winner was This Game is Broken. So congratulations to them. I do listen to their podcast. So, um, you know, very good podcast. Well deserved. Uh, so the two runner-ups were Beyond Solitaire, so that's Liz, our good friend Liz, um, who her first podcast she was ever on was the One Stop Co-op Shop, and uh, of course us at One Stop Co-op Shop. So it just makes it, I don't know, it just makes it like, oh, people do like what we're doing. You know what I mean? Because you never know. Like you do all this work, you're, you're sitting there and it's all, you know, I'm recording in the basement of my house and you never know, you know, whether people are enjoying what you're doing or whatever else. I mean, you see the numbers, but you know, as much as, you know, seeing numbers rise is great, you know, and like more people viewing your stuff and more subscribers or whatever, all that's great. But at the end of the day, it's not like one person saying, thank you for what you do is like worth 10 times that. Right. Um, and this is just like a bunch of people like voting for us and telling us that they like what we do. Um, and Mary says, congratulations. Thank you, Mary. Um, but then the other thing that was kind of related to that was um, when I went to the airport of all places. Now, I always laugh when I heard like people being recognized in the airport or whatever else or, go, you know, someplace. I've never been recognized anywhere in my entire life. When we went to the airport. Um, I just started talking to this guy in line and he goes, wait, are you going to Kana Heroes? I said, yeah. He goes, are you Peter? And like just somebody recognizing me out of like a normal element, like in a random spot in the airport, like in line. Yes, we we're going to the same city, so it makes sense to some degree. But uh, that was Jay. Um, he's from Jersey. And I am going to I did meet a lot of great people over the course of the weekend. I'm not going to be able to shout everybody else, unfortunately. So but um, he kind of that kind of got my weekend off to a good start. And then Friday when we went to play games, a lot of people just came up and introduced themselves. And that was really cool. Um, and, you know, I was introducing myself because I thought they were just being nice. They're like, oh, yeah, we know who you are. I'm like, oh, OK. You know, because, again, we do these things, but you never know. Um, you know, you never know if you're just shouting into the ether. So that was really cool for me. And that really did. So for everybody who came up, said hi. For everybody who I got to play with, um, thank you so much. You You really you know, made it possible or not even possible, but like made it so that I want to keep doing this. So I definitely appreciate all of those people. Um, so that was my, my little shout out. Um, so anything for you on Thursday? Um, we talked about deck building. Uh, we went to Colin's house. That's when we played Uno, uh, <laughs> Dark Games uh, and Project Elite. And you played some Ashes Friday night or... Or Thursday no, night. so on Thursday Thursday night, uh, the only thing that I got I played was um, the because I I was still doing like con organization stuff like we we're getting yeah. the, the the kind of the ticket scanning and I actually had to fix up the the raffle bot um, and we can talk about the raffle. You did uh, that Friday morning, I remember because yeah, I did that like Friday morning, morning but also like identifying the the problem on Thursday night. Okay. Uh, but we did our I guess I mean I, I guess two times at this point. I don't know if that's tradition, but. Um, Americano does not is like a standard. He likes playing the game on standard. And last year we made him play Heroic Rhino uh, <laughs> when with City and Chaos, which is the one with Rhino in it uh, right. on Heroic. And so he like entertained us last year and played it. And uh, we made him play it again. Uh, so all the organizers yeah. played uh, Heroic One Rhino <laughs> City and Chaos again. And we brought different decks. And uh, I played Ghost Spider Protection and. It, you know, it, it was a longish game because, like, in Heroic, I feel like Rhino heals, like, eight times or, like, eight health every time you go through that deck. So uh, he's, like, uh, he's, like, a beast or he's like He's, like, yeah, he's, like, a poor man's, like, Sabertooth or whatever, Sabertooth, right? not beast. That's right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that, that was fun. Uh, and that was, like, a good way to kind of kick off, um, you know... The, the con i guess before it started so i don't uh, so, i don't so. think i've ever played heroic it's funny because we've played so many games of expert and done crazy stuff and played expert 2 and all that 
So at Heroic, does everybody draw one extra card every turn? Yep. So we are drawing eight, at least eight cards off the encounter deck uh, during the encounter phase every turn. That seems. So awesome. You can imagine, like, like so we got so <laughs> many excel. So and it's also sitting in cast where it has that one peril treachery where it's like you can either like exhaust a character and spend a resource to put an acceleration token on the main scheme. Right. Uh, so we're using my like uh, like normal cardboard tokens uh, right. for that game and. We ran out of acceleration cardboard tokens <laughs> in that game. So we had to like start using someone else's acceleration tokens because there's that many. I mean, you're just like burning through that deck so fast, right? Like, yeah. I mean, that's what, like, if you get no surges, which of course there are surges, right? You're getting eight during the encounter phase and four during the boost phase. So 12 cards minimum around. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a lot. So that was yeah, your so... Thursday night. Yeah. Was... And did you beat it? Yeah, we did beat it. Um, nice. I mean, we're up till I think like one a.m. or something. And I mean, that's like, I mean, you got back near the tail end of that, right? When I was clean, we were finishing and then cleaned yep. up. So yep, yeah. So I did see you playing it, but I didn't realize you were playing. I saw the number of encounter or the uh, acceleration tokens. I remember that. That was I was yeah. like, wait, against it Rhino? Was... What's going on here? And then uh, yeah, yeah, you explained the whole heroic thing. Uh, all right, so Friday. Uh, Friday morning, I actually played a game, I guess. Oh, you guys were playing Ashes, I believe, in the morning. Yeah, we didn't finish. Before we went to the con, and I pulled out Cyclops and played, I don't know, not even a half a game. Just a couple turns against Expert Hella. Again, seeing if I wanted to play this deck with other people. Um, and it turns out... Was the verdict yes or no? It was fine. Yeah, yeah. No, I liked it, and it went well. Um, but then we started the, we went to the con and started playing. Um, the first game I played was expert mutagen. I guess that wasn't. So when we first went in, I found a group, um, and you know, we started playing and I guess there was no, that wasn't a scenario. We were just, somebody wanted to play. No, no, it, it was, it was kind of just free play. Cause you know. I, people trickle in. I don't, I don't know when people get in at the at the start of the event. Um, and some people were still working on Fridays too. So we had our first event, which was the uh, Magneto event, starting at 1 p.m. Got it. Yeah, so somebody said, go ahead and play Star-Lord. We expect chaos when you play. So I did. Um, and against Expert Mutagen, where you already start with two cards in front of you, turn one. Uh, then Star Lord adding more cards on top of that. Did did you take a card on the opening turn? You're just like I was whatever. Not I'll take planning four. on it, but I think I did. <laughs> I'm taking a card turn one. Well, that's what you say every time. I'm not planning on taking this card, but then you take a card. Yeah, yeah, no. So uh, yeah, it was total chaos from turn one. Of course, turn one I got shadows, uh, and I got. Triple was it was it the card that you took? No, it was that was not the card I took. Come on, Terrence. It might have been the card I took. Um, I, I got shadows and I got triple attacked. So I was down to like one health or two health I mean, or the, something on turn the one. The fact that you were even alive after three attacks is pretty Yeah, pretty well, if somebody crazy. Chumped, uh, chumped. If somebody blocked one of them, I think I had a chumper for another. But I mean, it was just like, yeah, it was no bueno. Like, I just, kept, I was like, oh, we're going to have to sweep turn one. Like, this is it. <laughs> like, um, I can't remember. Actually, I did not have attack and a chump. It was definitely, oh, and one of the attacks, yeah, no, I think I did. But one of the attacks that got through was like a four boost and a three boost. It was crazy. So I think I only actually got hit by one of those, but it was like the worst possible draw for the one I actually got hit with. I was like, oh, well, that was fun. <laughs> like. So, uh, yeah, it, it was just bad from turn one. We actually survived for quite a while and kind of hung around, but it ended up being a loss at the end of the day. Mutagen's tough, man. Like, you forget how tough Mutagen can be um, until you play it. And, of course, we're playing Expert. Uh, I don't know that there was any... Uh, there were some crazy modulars in there, too. Um, so, to, to make it even harder. But, yeah. No, I mean, if you don't get a good start on Mutagen and then you're playing Star-Lord on top of it, uh, which just adds to the chaos, yeah, yeah, that that did not go well. Did not go well at all. <laughs> um, did you play anything before the event? Or was the event... Or did you not play anything Friday? No, I, I played some games. Uh, I 
Yeah, so, you know, I spent the morning scanning people in and handing out swag, uh, as you do when you organize an event. Um, Kenny Hawk uh, did not scan people in last year because something with his phone. And then he got a new phone this year, and he also couldn't scan people in because <laughs> his kid threw his phone on, like, the floor and broke the oh, charging no. port on the bottom of his like new iPhone. Oh no. So the only way he could charge his phone was is like through wireless charging, which is like slow. Yes. <laughs> like his molasses, right? And so that meant that he couldn't be using his phone for most of the morning, like like using the camera scanning people in, uh, in case like, you know, he'd talk to his family or something, right? So so he he opted out of scanning people in. Uh I think he just doesn't want to do it or something at this point but oh yeah. uh yeah so anything you can do so, to get out of that that's for sure yeah and so that's what i did for the morning but then uh after kind of most of the people were checked in after the first hour or so we we i just like walked around kind of the floor to see what people are doing a lot of people ready in games um but this is probably actually one of the highlights uh for me of the con uh which was uh i found there was someone who was tucked away in the the like far like far away from the opening doors like in the back left corner and he had like you know like the btst like villain board set up so he was like setting up basically a solo game uh at the con he had like you know like a shield hq kind of like briefcase of like all of his cards and stuff and uh kenny hawk and i basically sat down and just started talking to him and was was like you know what's up like are you looking for people to play with? And, you know, he basically told a story like how he came to the con and he's really shy and uh, had never played, like has never played a multiplayer game with someone. So we went and got our stuff and played our first game with him. Right. And That's awesome. we ended up finding a, a fourth person. So we played a four player kind of uh, skirmish game of Magneto. Um and we finished right before the start of the next Magneto event, like the actual Magneto event. And so I, I like for me, that's just like a heartwarming kind of story of, yeah, it's very cool. Uh, a kind of thing of just like, uh, we, uh, get just introducing him to people and getting him to play a game. And I think, uh, so we had one of the new things we did this year is we actually had, uh, the sign up sheet up in front for all of our events. People could sign up for groups to play with. And I feel like and, you did that for every event. Yes, that's why we never played together. Um, well, that's great. No, and I just kept – like, people kept asking me to play, um, which, again, going back to the points at the beginning, and I just kept saying yes. Like, Yeah. Um, and, well, you know, not all of us are as popular as you, Peter. People don't ask me stop, to play, so I have stop. to, like, sign well, up for groups. Well, the last groups. day, nobody, was, nobody wanted to play with me anymore. My reputation had – uh, you know, the people that actually played with me at that point, they're like, oh, yeah, this isn't fun. Now we see what Terrence has to deal with every single week. Um, yeah. But, yeah. No, well, you didn't, you didn't have to play with Steve. You get to play that fantastic game. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that. And again, I want to go pretty fast through the rest of this. I, I think big general sweeping things um, is good. So the Magneto event was fun. And again, you could play all of these events. Now for the Magneto event, you're going to need extra people, uh, extra groups around because uh, it's meant to be like a multiplayer event. So that was at one o'clock. Um, and yeah, I played Gamora and we beat Magneto. I can't remember if it was pretty good, but yeah, it, it was a fun game. So what was the big uh, shtick with that one? Yeah, so I actually designed this one. So I, I'm, I don't know about proud of it, but I, I, I got good feedback on it. Um, so it's a pretty standard game. We didn't want to do a whole lot of crazy stuff. Uh, so the kind of the two changes to make it a little more interactive with the different groups was um, every 20 minutes or so, uh, uh, Mag, one of the organizers. Uh, so people had to basically take the Brotherhood modular, which has, you know, Toad, Blob, pyro avalanche um in it and set that modular aside um so you know that means it's going to come into play at some point so every 20 minutes basically uh mag would announce which specific card uh would go f in play face down as an encounter card with the first player um so that you know kind of turned the heat up of making the game a little more interesting and then i think thematically kind of cool and then the kind of interactive part with the other tables was that Anytime you finish one of the, the those like side schemes that are like the main ones that are part of basically defeating Magneto, 
you got to go to uh, a table to your left and right and tell them to remove a magnetic counter. And then the the first group that actually won, uh, when they reported it, everyone got to remove a magnetic counter uh, from kind of their game. And yeah. so, so that- I misheard that, and I thought it was anytime anybody won, uh, you got to remove magnetic counter. So that was my moment of uh, stupidity when I yelled out, hey, everybody remove a magnet counter. But somebody had already won before us. So I was like, oh, it's not every time. It's just the first time. Sorry. Never mind. Put your magnet counter back on, people. Um, but yeah, no, that was fun. Yeah, what- that was good. Uh, I mean, it, yes. it, again, it felt like a normal game, but you were just getting these... It was cool that Magneto was getting his buddies coming in throughout the course of the game, right? Um, and it was timed in such a way, at least for our table, that it wasn't the same person kept getting stuck with, um, you know, with them coming in uh, each time. So, and the longer the game took, you knew the more bad guys were going to come in. So it actually almost gave you a reason to rush through it a little bit faster as well. So, no, I thought it was v- very well designed. Good job, Terrence. Thanks. Yeah, I, we just like I said, wanted to keep it simple. I, I, I got to play in that event, which was fun. Um, I actually think I played this exact deck. I played Spider-Man Protection. And so it meant that I got all the magnetic counters because I was defending for everyone. Nice. Um, <laughs> and it, it was just like, I didn't take like any damage from defending. I just took damage because he little would throw a magnetic missile, like one of the Sentinels, in my face. And most of the time, that Sentinel was not even in front of me. So like someone lost a minion, I just took five damage. Five to damage, face. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh like, yeah, great. we got rid of that min- uh, that uh, that minion. That's great. Oh no, wait, yeah. I just took twenty seven damage to my face. Yeah, no, that's yeah. pretty funny. Uh, and then we did another event right afterward, right? Or there was some time maybe in between, but I got some. It kind of depends. I, I think uh, so you, people got to pick like whether you played Sander Expert Heroic. I don't think I want to play Heroic. Um. But uh, and then you also got to pick which modular you polluted in. So like, I, I think people, some people picked like pretty challenging stuff. So, uh, some people actually. So the next event was at four p.m. and that was our actually epic multiplayer event. Uh, the first one that I know of in Marvel Champions. Multi- um, multiverse kind of... meltdown is what it was called. And again, yeah. all these cards are on Tabletop Simulator or KindOfHeroes.com. Um, you can go and you can find all these cards. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty hefty modular, and what's cool about it is that it allows you to actually make any scenario uh, epic multiplayer. Uh, I believe the card count is seventeen cards or something like that. So oh, it's I didn't pretty, realize that. P- pretty hefty modular. Um, one of the pieces of feedback I got was that it feels like uh, it can take over the scenario a little bit just for how many cards are in there. Um, sure. So, uh, the Winning Hand podcast uh, that actually did just one on on Kana Heroes talks a lot about this modular set um but just briefly like this one centers around kang and american chavez and the kind of the idea is that you're traveling with the multiverse and there's a permanent side scheme that when you beat it it flips kind of the other side so on one side there's an amplify icon and on the the reverse side there's a crisis symbol um and then when you beat kang basically american chavez comes out and you have to kind of beat the flip side of that side scheme to kind of bring her back and um you know, every time you flip it, like Kang comes back. So you're kind of like juggling that. Um, and then there's a bunch of cards that go in the encounter deck that have a new keyword that we introduce called the multiverse keyword. So there usually be some effect that happens. Like when you defeat this minion, it will say like the first player draws two cards. Um, and then the multiverse effect is you get to go to a table and tell them that they can also get this effect. Yep. Um, and so, so we used to actually have like negative effects in there. Um, and we removed them to just have positive stuff. That was good. It was kind of, it kind of sucked to go to tail and be like, uh, lose a card or something, right? Like the inverse of draw two cards, you know? Yeah. Um, no, no, that was the right choice. Definitely the right choice. Um, yeah, no, it was fun and it was cool. Like people kept coming over to you like, Hey, do this or Hey, do that. And then when somebody gave something to you, you'd be like, Oh yeah, you do this um so yeah and they were all very thematic they all had to do with like something that would have happened in the multiverse um so no i i thought that was a very fun modular um and we played against claw and that was the recommendation uh was to play against claw right yep um yeah so it was fun 
And then we played, uh, we got kind of, again, player's choice after that that night. We've, I played Cyclops against Sinister Six. Um, why? Because I like Sinister Six. It was I, I suggested that one. Um, and that is always a good scenario. So did you play any more that night after you were done with the uh, two events? Yeah, I got to play one more game. Uh, I mean, it was pretty pretty late i think because uh i think it was probably by like seven or something so with the venue closing at 10 I, I think i fit like one more game in um so we did uh mojo with sitcom and, and kind of did like one of the challenge cards yeah um and uh end people up... were doing the challenge cards i noticed that night or whenever there was downtime uh people were definitely doing the challenge cards so that was a nice ad because you could just shuffle them up and like draw a challenge card and it would be something from uh mutant genesis or from mojo uh and you just have to play it normal except there's like one slight change to the rules or whatever to make it harder um and they were challenging for darn sure so but it was nice if you're like what do you want to play i don't know just draw a random challenge right um which was cool yeah i mean i didn't actually see the challenge cards all too often um but it was nice to hear that some people got value out of them uh, i think some of the feedback we got was like people didn't even really know what they were or how to use them yeah there wasn't like directions um, for them uh, um so maybe we can do that better next year yeah, that's fine uh I, I think it was good overall um so it was friday uh i promise saturday will go quicker probably um because saturday was the campaign um, and you just saw mission one again, if you watch this on the streaming channel, you saw mission one where you go against crossbones. Uh, so I sat down at a table and again, I said, I wasn't going to shout out everybody that I played with this weekend, but I really feel like I got to shout out this one person. Uh, I was playing with a, a father and daughter and the daughter was 11 years old and my daughter's 11 years old. And I have played this game with her many times and she patiently sits through and plays a game with me. But after we're done that game, She's just done. She's not playing uh, a second game for sure. Um, and so I played with this 11-year-old uh, and her father. Her name was Jubilee. She was awesome. And not only did she have you know more focus than I've ever seen a kid her age have, but she was really very good at the game as well. Um, so just a shout out there to Jubilee. Um, just amazing job playing. Um, so... Yeah, that was that was really cool for me to see and then come home and be like, why can't you do that? No, no, I would never do that to my daughter. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it, it was fun to play. So the scenarios, the campaign, I'll just quickly go over our uh, what happened. Mission one, we actually beat. Now we we're playing standard. We did start with the environment card in play. Mission two, we lost when we played standard again with the environment card in play. Then we lost again. Then we stopped putting the environment card in play and rejiggered our decks um, and lost again and lost, I think, a fourth time. And then I think it's the fifth time we played. It might have been the fourth time we played. We um, decided to just beat it once because we were halfway through and we had a million minions out and a million side schemes out. We're like, you know what? We're just going to call it a skirmish game and say we won uh, and move on. <laughs> so we played that one four or five times. The, the second one, the middle one, which we'll probably play on our streaming channel next week, um, was a little bit longer. Um, just, it just, it was so punishing. It felt like, like there were so many side schemes and there were so many just epic minions that came out and they were all tough because of the scenario, uh, whatever the, you know, the show environment. So, yeah, that one was tough. We never really beat that one. And then we played the last one, which was... So the second one was Master Mold. Who was the third one? Mojo. Was Mojo? That's right. And uh, we beat that one pretty easily first time through. So that was, you know, a lot of the day on Saturday. Um, and we had, we had a lot of fun with that campaign as well. A little frustration on that second scenario. Um, just our table couldn't figure it out, but there were plenty of tables that did beat it. So I don't, I mean, it certainly wasn't unbeatable for sure. So what was your experience with the campaign? Uh, I had a rough go at actually at the campaign. Um, uh, we were playing on standard. Uh, we lost crossbones. I think the first time we played it and then won. uh, I ended up, um, 
I played like the Spider Woman aggression protection deck, and then end up a bunch of people end up swapping decks. I end up pulling out my Cap America Justice deck, uh, and was able to kind of give everyone, well, not give everyone, but like put out mansions and helicares uh, uh, to help other folks ramp up, and then just pull away a ton of threat with like Overwatch and you know like making an entrance, so like thwarting for like six, and then removing six off another side scheme. And then reading and thwarting for six again, right? Or or four or whatever. So definitely like doing a much better job of handling threat. And then we play Master Mold, and we just got I think like pummeled our first time. Yeah, and then Master Mold the group weird. kind of I, I think because our games were really long. So like at that point, you're talking about like three games where two of them were two and a half hours long each or something, right? And uh, at that point, like you know, like people wanted to play with other people, so we kind of broke took a took a like end of the campaign and kind of like moved on oh so you never Um, played mojo no oh okay all right i I did Um, hear some people beat it though like so yeah there's i mean i I talked to a bunch of people who who beat it um you know like and in the campaign you're allowed to fail forward um so one thing is like if master mold was hard we didn't want people to mess and just get stuck and like not be able to 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 kind of just I, I think that just doesn't feel great. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, it just took a long time and then um, end up just playing other games. Yeah. Mary said, uh, I really like the campaign. Ran through it on standard with my cat blue shield deck. Nice. Um, yeah. No, it was definitely fun. Like I said, I think the middle one was definitely pretty challenging, but still had a fun time. Um, I played a couple more games that night. I played Sandman, and then I probably played the most frustrating game of Marvel Champions I've ever played in my life. Um, you know, no no shade on the person who was uh, the cause of this. Like, it, it just it just was. Uh, so we were playing uh, against Ultron, and one of the players at the table had a... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nova. Rocket. Nova. A Nova deck. Uh, and there, there's a card in Nova that lets them, every time they defeat a minion, ready, and every time they ready, uh, they get to ready and draw a card every time they defeat a minion. And if you could just think about how many drones come out in an Ultron game, um, it was a lot. I mean, it was at least uh. eight a turn. So every time they defeat a drone, they'd ready themselves, which also, also ready their helmet, which means they get free resources, and they get to draw a card. And of course, have to reevaluate at that point. So, like everybody else's turns were like pretty quick, and this one um, Novadex turn just took forever. Uh, again, no shade. Like it was an interesting experience to see that. Uh, I'd never want to play that again. Uh, I just by the end, I was um, like, okay. unleash the Nova Force. Yeah, unleash the Nova Force is the card. Uh, so I mean, it was just again. Imagine somebody dra- having to draw eight cards reevaluate their turn every time they draw a card um and then they had a card that they played that let them draw back into their hand and we were also playing with a leadership deck which let them get that ally back in their hand every turn too and plus they're drawn through 15 cards of their deck and i think there's two unleashed the nova forces in their deck i mean it was just it was ridiculous like there was it was literally every turn that kept happening over and over so if you want to feel super powerful do that like but do it in a solo game not in a four-player game uh if, if i wonder to... i wonder if you could do that with uh but like go aggression because i i actually talked to uh it was joe who was playing that deck um because well, we played a game on shade but yeah, on yes. on was... sunday and uh he was telling me he was playing like a nova justice deck um, yeah, so he never did any damage I, either. That was the frustrating part. He'd have these 30-minute turns, and we'd be exactly where we were. Like, there were no minions on the board. Great. But, like, yeah, there was also, like, you know, four or six damage done. And then I'd take my yeah, turn and do, like, 10 or 15 damage in, like, three seconds. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think if he played aggression, it would have been very different. Oh, yeah, it would have been over much quicker. Um, but the funny part is I did call for action. This was the best part of the whole game. I called for an action for the player before him, and they said yes, and I started killing minions. I started killing drones because I'm like, forget it. So I'm not you can sit- kill them? Yes, I'm not sitting through that again. Well, they were also like, 
my cards had overkill, like remove threat from the scheme or whatever. But yeah, I started calling for actions. And then when Joe was going, I was like, Hey Joe, can I have an action? <laughs> He's like, no. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I played a good game with him. Actually, that was like the last game I played, uh, on Sunday, um, where we played, um, against mansion we did mansion attack with him and mark and that was a fun game yeah, yeah no no i mean he's a good guy it was fun he was laughing about it the whole time but boy yeah, yeah so talk about something i never want to ever experience again there is a marvel champions game that is like two to two and a half hours and like one person's playing two hours of that you know like three quarters of the time is one player with one deck um yeah that that uh i feel that way sometimes when people play like gandalf decks and lord of the rings it's just like why did you bring a gandalf deck where yeah. like it's just like they they like you know it's just like they do stuff on their turn where they gotta like find a card from their deck look at the top five or whatever do a thing swap cards from their deck to the top of their deck and just they just do so much stuff that it's just like everyone's like done right like they were done with their turns like five minutes ago yeah and i tried to when players were having longer turns like i'd go through like do all the actions i could then i'd set my cards down in front of me like that i'm gonna play with the cards i was gonna use to pay for them now of course yeah. things sometimes change during your turn but for the most part i uh yeah that that was my my strategy um yeah, so any notable games Saturday night for you after the campaign or um do we just the, to... yeah, the the only game I played at the con afterwards. I I guess I only played events cuz we did Sandman like you're saying and that was an event where it was Sandy Sandman uh where basically Adder Cop from MCM was going around making puns and if you smirked or chuckled, you got a bunch of sand counters. Yeah. Um I heard some people got like five sand counters. Nice. Uh uh, on their thing which you know definitely in, impacts the game <laughs> yes uh a little bit and so uh yeah that was a good game uh, i played with max go and uh i think a relatively new player austin who was playing ant-man for the first time and he just like crushed it uh he also brought like the btst like hero board for ant-man and it's like giant size so it can fit the giant card <laughs> nice and that thing was just like insanely large it was kind of hilarious when you have like your normal hero card on this like massive board um the funny yeah that was fun yeah the funniest part about that game for me was i was using my gamora deck again and uh i had my nebula ally come out pretty quickly and she took her one damage so she's sitting on one damage and i ended up drawing a um one of those uh spears what, is that yep. what they are? Would give them plus two energy, attack. Energy spear. Energy spear. Yeah. So I drew one and gave it to Gamora, and I literally had her shoveling out sand for the rest of the game. So she had like three or four attack. I can't remember what it was. I think it was four for some reason. Maybe. Yeah, it's like plus two, right? And she's a two two. Yeah, two yeah. two two. So she was literally she was shoveling sand for the rest of the game for us. So it's like, <laughs> look, there's my sister with her shovel. <laughs> Just take it out sand. She lost. She lost the competition. Yep, I mean that's that's what it is, you know. That but it was such a nebula thing to do. Is you can just see her with that like angry face, just being like, "I can't believe I'm sitting here shoveling sand." So, uh, yeah, no, that that was the funny uh, memory for me from that game was uh, Nebula just shoveling sand. The, I think she's literally the only one that took out sand uh, the entire game was Nebula after her first turn. Uh, maybe, maybe Gamora shoveled a little bit on turn one or whatever, but. Yeah, after that, it was Nebula the rest of the game. So it was pretty hilarious. Yeah, um, and then after the con, I just played Ashes with Candy Hawk, so I didn't play any Marvel Champions. Okay, yeah, and that's when I ended up playing Ultron. You and I were supposed to play a game that night, but you're like, no, 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 go play with them. They're leaving the next day. So I did, and I had fun, except for, yeah, that was the Ultron game. Uh, all right, so Sunday morning, I played the most random game of Marvel Champions in my life. And you'll never believe who it was with. You already know, so I guess I can't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Br Steve... Brant will never guess. Brant will never guess. <laughs> yeah, it was with Steve uh, from. Uh, it used to be play Brant. the game. Yeah, it used play to be the game beat now, the game. right? Now it's play the game. Uh, yeah, he just pulled out a random set. Uh, from like... well, he actually went to Shield HQ, Shield HQ, and, and took stuff, but they didn't have standard expert. <laughs> Right, so we didn't play with Standard Expert. Nobody put their obligation in. We just played a game against Claw, and it was like, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe, and we just all brought decks and just beat it pretty quickly. So it was fine. 
Um, <laughs> but it's pretty random. It's like, uh, and then that's when I played Deep Rock. And then there was a Magneto challenge that day, right? Oh, oh no, that was just one of the challenges. I played the Magneto challenge. Um, yeah, what'd played, you think of that? Which, uh, remind me, remind me what, what changed. Uh, so the Magneto challenge uh, and the two side schemes, or you were playing four player, right? Yes, we were playing four um, player. Yeah, so and uh, two of the side schemes that I think have Amplify, but um, when you beat it, you have to discard cards off the top of the deck, and for every magnetic card you do, you add a magnet counter onto yeah. um, onto the main scheme. I think and we so... might have lost it the first time and then beat it the second time. It was a longer game. But like, I mean, it's a Magneto. Magneto is not a short game. And I think somebody actually, this is another game. Somebody asked me to play Star Lord, which just again extends the game. Like I felt bad. I was the one making that game long. I can't remember if we lost the first time or not, or if it was. I think it was just really close to losing, like several times. Like a bad flip would have killed us. And I think we actually just survived through it and ended up winning our first time through that um, mission. But I might be wrong. We might have had to play it a second time. Um, but either way, it was, it was super fun. It was what you'd want out of a challenge, which is super challenging. Um, but yeah, the group I was playing with had played through all of the set up to Magneto. And that was their last one from the main. They hadn't played any of the Mojo yet. They were looking forward to playing the Mojo challenges, but they'd beat all the other challenges. So they wanted to keep going with the challenges. And so, yeah, no, we had a, uh, a fun time doing that, but that was my last game of the weekend. Um, because that was Sunday, and then I had to take a flight out because we're only there till like six or whatever. Um, I, I I had played Deep Rock that day too, uh, so yeah, it was fun. All in all, good time. So, how was your Sunday? Uh, I got to play Mansion Tank twice with uh Joe and, and Mark. Like I said, uh, I think Andy and join us for the first game were. We tried it on Expert and then got some bad draws and kind of got crushed uh, and then played it again on Standard because they had to catch a flight or they had to like leave for the airport. So yeah. we kind of didn't want to get a longer game. And I think Mansion Attack is fun, a bit random, um, but it's not any longer because you got to take down that third villain. Um, right. And it's only two in Standard. Uh, and we, we just got really unlucky on the first flop. We got a Cafeteria as the starting stage two side team which if you're playing with someone who's playing classes protection feels bad because that's the one that has retail one oh, um, yeah. which isn't good for anyone else tough and we got toad right and like toad sucks is the opening one because it's just no one wants <laughs> to discard cards you know so it, right. it just like it was just like a bad setup right uh, uh for just like getting up and running um and then i played another game of magog on standard with with uh Sko and Joss and Austin um with the inheritors module that was fun. So that's all that was it for you on Sunday? Yep. And then I went over to Colin's house and had uh, a home cooked meal. Nice. Yeah, no, we had two you had two home cooked meals then. I ended up having yep. one on Thursday night and you came over and joined me for that and then you had a second one. So nice. Yeah. Colin. Look at Colin being a hospitable host while we were there. And it's probably more Monica than Colin, let's be honest. Yeah, no, it's certainly more Monica than Colin. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, cool. So overall impressions, I really liked it. Um, there was So the, one of the cool things, because I wasn't there last year for the entire convention, uh, there was always something to do. It wasn't, there wasn't really downtime. So there was always a new scenario being set up. There was always something going on, except for that last day. Which, again, people were playing. We saw people playing Spirit Island all weekend, um, whether it was at the con on Sunday or in the hotel. Uh, every night I saw that same group playing Spirit Island, um, which is one of my favorite games. So that was cool. A lot of four-player Spirit Island. Um, but, yeah, it was just fun to, like, for me, that there was always a new event. It's not like, well, what should we play next? Um, and even for those times, the challenge cards were perfect for that because, again, you just shuffle up. Or for me, like, I wanted to play some of my favorite scenarios. So I was like, hey, you have this Sinister Six? Yep, let's play that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, I wasn't expecting 
Because, you know, you always think to yourself, what, how are we going to, what am I going to do? Am I doing the same thing the whole time? But because it was always a scenario or a multiplayer event or whatever else, there was always something new and different that you hadn't experienced before that you got to play for the first time with a bunch of people who are also playing it for the first time. So for me, that was one of the coolest parts of the convention. Um, now, I know you, were, as one of the organizers, knew a lot of what was coming. What were some of your favorite moments or things, you know, that, that you got out of the con this year? Um, I mean, we... we... This is our second year, so uh, I mean, I don't know if you would have said those the same kind of words uh, last year. Not that it was like a bad event last year, but you know, our first year you're just not doing as much, right? Like you're just trying to make the con happen, and uh, so we had some events, but we definitely didn't do as much. Like you know, we had the a new standard which we've played a bunch on the stream um, in the campaign, and uh, you know, that's kind of it, right? Like we definitely did a lot more this year and so you know that was a lot of the uh stuff we just we wanted to do people like the events we want to do more of them but we didn't want to overload right so i think we did two events a day and and i think that was like a good kind of balance um i also got good feedback that you know same it's not a super hard scenario and people liked kind of having that scenario to end the day on saturday after kind of getting crushed by master mold Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it did feel good. You know, some after, people, after a lot of people campaign. kind of cruise through the campaign. Some people cruise through the campaign, but I think a lot of people kind of struggled. So we got some feedback about that. But yeah, I, I, I thought it was good. Um, uh, I think probably the highlights for me was just, you know, that, that story I had about playing with that, the person who's never played with anyone at the beginning of the con. Yep. Um, just, but actually, like, uh, we, we didn't know how, I think when you do any of this stuff, you never know how well it'll be received. So I'm glad the events were for the most part, pretty well received. Um, generally pretty good feedback on the campaign, but I think some people would have wished uh, it was easier. Um, so sure. that's some stuff we're taking back. Uh, and then, you know, like ways for it to ratchet up for people who want that difficulty. Um, but I think just having the player sign up and the, uh, the players wanted kind of flag, uh, yep was not a thing i think we knew how much they would be used and the fact that they were used at every event like the sign up thing and so we had i got some feedback um because we sent out the survey like some people used it who came in a group like i I think sometimes you expect people who come together like in a group of three or four to always play together uh, like the entire weekend that's what happens when kind of steve colin barrington and i go and I have to like make an effort to kind of break away from them. So I'll be like, I'm not playing a game with you. I'm going to play with other people. Right. Um, yeah. But they'll like play the whole con together. Right. Uh, and there was people who actually were like, no, this is great. Like it allowed me to play with other people. Cause I could just sign up for an event where we would just sign up for four different groups. Right. And so we wouldn't be playing together. And so that was like really neat to hear. So, uh, you know, you, you don't know how, how well that, that would be received. I've, I've heard at other cons when people have done those kind of things that no one uses it. So uh, I, I think it just was a sign of like how welcoming and how also like people want to be playing with a bunch of different people, right? And don't necessarily just want to be playing with the same people because that's part of the beauty of like bringing all these people together. Yeah. We did have a, a question. This is actually a perfect question for you, Terrence. Uh, Aaron asks, where do I find Marvel Champions cons near me, California? Local board game shops don't have anything. Is there a web resource that gives locations? Uh, I I don't think you did that this year, right? Like, so Con of Heroes is it. Like, it's, I think the only Marvel Champions specific convention, it's in Minnesota. Um, we probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. But, uh, <laughs> but there were ways for people to play online or to organize their own groups locally, right? So why don't you talk a little about that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so so organizers, we none of us actually live in uh, Minnesota or Minneapolis, uh, I guess, as a funny fact. Um, and so we all actually organize it remote um, in four different cities. Uh, but yeah, we, we do the fan, con- it's a fan convention and we, you know, basically don't, we don't get paid for it. Uh, and so we do it and just as a way kind of based off of kind of the rings, which is one for Lord of the Rings that we saw happen uh, in the same venue. Uh, and so we do that just to kind of have it as an event for people and people are local and travel in. And, and so we haven't really thought about organizing it outside of there, nor probably do we have the 
kind of capacity and plan to do it. But if people want to, I know, uh, like Peter's mentioned, all the stuff we've done, all the print and play, uh, we make that freely available. It's obviously on TTS, but if you go to the conaheroes.com, you can go to the website and click print and play. You can see the stuff that we have for both this year and last year, and you can go print that stuff off and like, uh, I guess like yeah, bring it, it to local a local group. thing and, yeah. and play with your local group. But, but it sounds like you're also asking like, how do I find a group because your local game store uh, doesn't have, doesn't necessarily have anything going on. Um, I don't know if you have any advice on that, Peter. No, I mean, there's ways to do it, meetup groups, things like that. Um, but that's hard for a lot of people to, like, if you haven't done it in the past to find Marvel Champions, I don't think people are going to come together to do, like, the kind of hero scenarios, right? Um, I mean, the real answer is, you know, you come to Minnesota and play with the rest of us. Uh, you try to find people online. Um, but most of the stuff, like, the, the campaign is definitely soloable. There wasn't anything that the new standard is fun to just throw into what you already have. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there's not really a good way to do it. I mean, if you go to conventions like Gen Con and say, hey, you know, there are Mar online Marvel Champions communities. There's a Discord for Marvel Champions. There's Facebook groups that are Marvel Champions. There's Reddit groups that are Marvel Champions. So... You know, if people are talking about coming to Gen Con or whatever, say, hey, does anybody have the kind of hero stuff? I'd love to play some of that while we're there. And you could probably organize it, you know, at a big, a bigger convention like Gen Con or whatever. Um, PAX Unplugged, things like that. But again, none of those are West Coast. Uh, maybe Dice Tower West. Uh, I know a lot of the Dice Tower folks love Marvel Champions, and none of them were at Con of Heroes, so maybe some of them would like to try some of the scenarios or whatever. Um, so there are ways to do it, but you're going to have to be more proactive about it. Um, or again, just come to Con of Heroes next year. And I'm sure if you showed up next year and were like, yeah, I want to play some of the stuff from last year, I'm sure people would be happy to play with you. Um, I know I bring all my stuff every year, so um, I will at least have the kind of hero stuff. I might not have the exact scenarios we need, but if you bring those scenarios, I mean, again, you can print and play all that stuff online too. Um, yeah, I guess just interjecting uh, for how you can find group groups locally. Uh, like Peter mentioned the Facebook and discords. There are actually, I believe in both the Hall of Heroes and MCM, there's a local meetup channel. And I definitely have seen people who live in California that kind of piped in. And so it might be worth just chat, like joining those discords if you have it. Um, and just basically saying, hey, I'm looking for people uh, wherever it is in California uh, to yeah, kind California of meet up and play. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I know Adderkop, um flew in from kind of i believe the la area somewhere in california so um there's something people who you know like like peter said california's a big state there's some people playing marvel champions in your area but but again it's big so it's also hard to drive right so i think yeah. some of the challenges with california is that even if you all if there are a bunch of people who live in like the la area <laughs> that could be like a two-hour drive right yeah. to meet up so i can imagine not wanting to do that but um, it's definitely worth checking out and, and seeing what's available. And I, I'm sure there's resources. I don't use Facebook, but I'm sure there's also in the Marvel Champions Facebook group um, well, searching and, there or kind of posting. And I mean, there again, we want everybody out there to go buy Marvel Champions because that's how it keeps being made. That's how it keeps going. But there's certainly online resources like, you know, Tabletop Simulator, the mod we use, they put all the scenario stuff in there they still have last year's stuff and they have this year's stuff from kind of heroes in there so hitch uh hitches tts mod does a very good job now again it's not in place of playing physically um but it's another option it's another way where if you're in a remote area or you don't have a, a local game group that wants to play you still you know buy the cards so you can play solo whatever else but there is a way to play online with people. That's how Terrence and I play. We live halfway across the country from each other, and we still manage to play every Friday night uh, using the Tabletop Simulator mod, 
we've also both bought everything there is to buy for the game so i don't feel guilty at all about that um so yeah so there are that you know that's another possibility as well if you can't find anybody locally again in the discord wherever else i know a lot of us end up playing um on tabletop simulator uh so that's another option yeah, I'm sorry I don't have a better answer there, but that's kind of... I mean, it's hard. Uh, admittedly, actually, I, I don't even have a local play group <laughs> yep. uh, in Austin, to be fair. So there used to be one, just like a cooperative LCG group I had at my local game store before the pandemic. And then um, my local game store basically replaced all their game tables with shelf space uh, to sell more games, yep. which makes sense from the pandemic and has no interest on going back, so... Yeah, and I mean, the, who I play with, I, I mean, I, 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 uh, I fathered my game group, so uh, that I play Marvel Champions with. <laughs> so I play with my kids. Um, so yeah, that's probably not as, as good an answer for everybody. Yeah, else. I don't, feel like that's a, that's a long that, that that's, that's a, a long term investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you you'll be able to play the con of uh, con of heroes, uh, twenty thirty five at the earliest if you start trying now um for that for that solution uh so probably not the best way to go um yeah so board game lawyer says hey all hello board game lawyer uh and uh aaron says lots of possible resource ideas thanks um so yeah i mean there you know and that's the other thing go ahead and chat in your answer um if you have ideas that aaron uh can do um Wasteland says, Mary says, a long-term investment that may not pay off uh, if the kids aren't into it. Yes, that is very true. Uh, and Aaron says, got to start them young. I don't know. My 11's the youngest. Um, I guess she was maybe 10 when she started playing. But yeah, they, they have to have a certain level of focus. And that's what impressed me so much about Jubilee. Um, she was an 11-year-old with a tremendous amount of focus. Um and ability to play all day and then she's back on sunday too um with the whole family on sunday and she's an older sister so I, I guess i'm starting to see a little bit of where that patience may come from uh definitely having to deal with younger siblings and probably she likes the fact that she gets some attention from her parents um because she had a, f a few younger siblings as well so uh, I i'm sure that's that's part of it it helps focus when you're like well if i don't focus i don't get my parents attention so let me go ahead and and stay on this but uh, yeah, no, it was very cool. Overall, great time. Highly recommend it. The con itself is super cheap. I mean, what was it? 50 bucks, 55 bucks. And then if you wanted to play Matt, which I highly recommend, it's like 20 or 25 bucks for that. Like, you know, you're talking about less than a hundred bucks to play Marvel Champions all weekend. Um, so the convention itself is super cheap, especially if you're local. There's almost no reason not to come. And the amount of content you get, not only the play Matt, but like all those cards, I mean, you said there was a 17 card modular. There was eight challenge cards. There's a new standard set, which is seven more cards. I mean, you get, shoot, if this was Fantasy Flight, just the cards alone, they would charge you more than 50 bucks for for the amount of content we got. Um, so, yeah, super. Well, to be it. fair, we're amateur designers. Well, yeah, I'm not going to say anything about Valkyrie here. Um, <laughs> just well we'll we'll end on a positive note <laughs> about professional designers don't always get it right either i guess i'll just leave it at that there you go got it in <laughs> yeah you, you also get a extra bonus monitor i don't know if you played the mojo cinematic universe i have i didn't we did play that we played it as part of the mojo campaign we started with it in actually uh that yeah was you don't have to i i i think it's it just like it's a standard mojo setup there so yep uh, but, we but did what's use fun is one. like you you can then use that with the mojo scenario so i think one of the things that we heard a lot was people really like the show setting stuff i know we do on the stream right um yep and so you can just use that uh in your collection of, of show cards now um so that was just like a nice bonus modular that uh not everyone i think played during the con because it wasn't required yep no we definitely played it and we will play it Again, once we get past Master Mold next week, which you and I are going to have to come up with a better plan than we did this week, which was let's just rush him down. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. With that Master was your Mold. plan. My plan was protection. And your plan was way better than mine. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to come up with a good plan next week 
um, because Master Mold is no joke. Um, so come back if you want to see Mission 2. Again, there's not really carryover from Game 1 to Game 2. Um, you know, it, it's not like you have, like, oh, you won, you get this. You lost, you get this. There's none of that. So it's a campaign in story only. Um, not necessarily in the fact that you're, like, leveling up as you go along. There might be some progression that holds over from Game 2 to 3. I can't remember. Um, but... No, a lot of fun. So join us next week. Um, and for those of you on the podcast, hopefully you enjoyed this. And, you know, for everybody out there, hopefully you come out and join us at Kana Heroes next year. Um, because I am sure it will be happening again. Because uh, lots of good, lots of good experiences there. All right, everybody. Terrence, bye. Bye, everyone.